Hello and welcome to Graveyard Media Podcast, episode 27 for the week of January 29th, 2017. I'm your host, Zane Gray. With me is Dawson. Do I sound sexy? And Thel. <laughs> he has a microphone. He, had a, he got a new microphone. You can see it in the camera is what he's saying. It's the same microphone. Oh, oh, well, oh, oh, well, yeah, which is why he doesn't sound that much different. Shush. You know, actually, I think it does sound a lot better. Mm. Good. Okay. Uh, I forgot goal. to change the thing. It's still on. Uh, Subnautica? No. <laughs> the the now discussing was uh something about Crocodile Dundee from last week. Dundee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> E-Nitro. So we're going to start off by I... talking about games and movies we've checked out this week and then head into the news, the gaming news and the movie news after that, probably. Sounds good. Thel yep. wants to start. Thel wants to start. Uh, I really haven't... Uh, I didn't really play anything. Anything new. I think I did a little bit of Streets of Rogue for the Streets of Rogue video that is up right now. You can go watch my... Um, I did it's watch... Very good. Yeah, I, I did, did watch, watch a movie, it, though. Of course. Um, because of the new big Oscar stuff coming out, the, the Bullshit Awards has released its uh, nominees, and we'll talk a little bit about that later. The bullshit but... Awards. Yeah, the Bullshit Awards. Uh, they uh, nominated a movie for Best Animated that I had completely forgotten that I needed to watch, and I probably should have mentioned at some point during the, uh, oh, this is one of the movies I haven't seen while I'm making my top 2017 list. Uh, Loving Vincent. Previously, I had said, uh, Your Name is probably the movie that, des that deserves to win Best Animated, and uh, I'm going to have to change that to Loving Vincent. Seriously? Really? Yeah. Uh, What's it about? Okay, so, uh, first off, what I, what I want to get, uh, first off, before I really get into what it's about, um, a tech, it's a technical achievement. Uh, is it's it's first and foremost big thing, and the reason that everyone's going crazy on it. A lot of people say, use the phrase that um, every frame is a painting. In this movie, that's incredibly literal. Every single frame is an oil canvas painting. Um, wow. Yeah, which is what the, sort of got this movie its fame and got this movie a lot of buzz. And uh, it looks fucking gorgeous, as I'm sure you would assume. It's a, everything is a oil canvas painting in the style of Vincent van Gogh. And that's what the movie is about. Uh, in the, it's, it, was, it takes place six months after Vincent van Gogh's death. And it's about a man who receives a letter from him to his brother. Really? He goes to try to send it to his brother, but he finds out that his brother is also dead. So on his quest to find a recipient for the letter, he constantly continues to stumble on more information about the man's death and the town that he died. Um, until he gets, like, at first he's very, you know, I don't want to have to deal with this shit. The guy was a fucking nutcase, I don't give a shit. And then he, eventually he gets really, really into it, and then he, you know, meet in the end meets Dr. Gachet, who is the uh, man who? who treated Vincent van Gogh in his last years. Uh, the psychiatrist. Um, who, who is also an artist and basically lays down everything for him. It is a wonderful little bio. Thing. Even, even, even outside of the great technical achievement that this is that won it all of its fame it's it's a it's a nice little movie and probably would have gone up for oscars if it wasn't if it didn't belong in the animation category but <laughs> it's going to lose to coco so of course it is yeah everything's going to lose to coco you say this time. as you as you drink out of a day of the dead cup motherfucker hey well, he, it's my he aesthetic, always has though. that cup yeah he always yeah, 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 I, yeah. I just i just thought it was funny that uh <laughs> call it hey, ironic man. right yeah Mm. I, yeah, and and again, yeah. Coco was a good movie. I have <laughs> I to stress, it's just it's like they're fucking, they're, they're, they're not even like giving out candy. It's just fucking, just it just they, they don't even watch any other of these fucking movies. They watch the Disney one, and that's it, so they can vote on it. Yeah, and sometimes they don't even do that. Fuck. I what I they still think. It. Was your name even nominated? Uh, no, I don't think it was. Oh my god. Yeah. You know, sucks. it was nominated, and something that has it. been, uh, recently getting a lot of flack for, Boss Baby. Yeah, that's dumb. Did that even come out in 2017? Yeah. 
Yeah, really early. It was like January yeah. or something. January, February. The studio. Th- that's. I don't think. Okay, I don't think good. Boss Baby was that bad. Okay, but it's not Maybe Oscar out. nominee. This this uh, this nominated. movie was released by the same studio. Boss Baby was released by the same studio that released another movie this year that got also got stuff for an Oscar. Captain Underpants, which probably no, wasn't worthy of Captain Underpants was good though. Yeah, yeah, no, that's what Straight I'm saying. Up. Which wasn't um worthy of an Oscar either, but it was good. Yeah. <laughs> but it, well, I didn't see any I liked, of them. Uh, so I don't know. I don't think the writing was particularly great in either of these movies, but the yeah. artistic design was a lot better in Captain Underpants. Yeah. So, I I don't know. <laughs> and, you know, I would tell people, hey, go watch the Annie's. Go fucking watch the Annie's instead of watching the, uh, if you want to give a shit about cartoons. But the thing is with the Annie's is that those ones are so bought and sold that even Disney <laughs> won't go, which is a f- damn fuck. Yeah, it's, it's goddamn crazy. Yeah, they're like we don't need your, we don't need your film thing. Yeah, we're you Disney. Money, we're yeah. gonna win the Oscars anyway. Yeah, so I mean, if you want to watch an award show for animated uh, film where you can sort of like get a good idea of all of the animated, film, you better uh, fucking make one yourself. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck to tell you. Uh, go to go go. Or go. you could just watch the Graveyard Media podcast where we talk about all kinds of animated shit. Where uh, I where I have a constant countdown to uh, wolf walkers behind me, and also I say the words "board boy" every uh, single podcast because I'm being paid by them. I'm not. I don't think I. Looks really uh, good. Yeah. I'm also, excited. I've never heard you say those words. I don't uh, think I've ever heard you talk about either of those. I podcasts. fucking talk about bird boy every goddamn podcast. Well, bird every boy podcast. I'm saying bird That's boy. True. I, I heard. I thought you said boy. like brown board or something i swear oh, you oh, said no. something oh, okay. else <laughs> all right, all right. I, 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 that, that's fair and if you both heard it it's like i ain't gonna argue that i very well might have <laughs> uh wolf walkers is the uh tom moore movie that's going to be coming out oh yeah 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 next the... year so let, let's jump around a little bit um yeah. since you've watched since you're talking about animated movies i'm gonna i'm gonna talk about an animated movie i saw this week too oh okay uh oh, cool. i saw mary and the witch's flower Oh, cool! I still haven't seen that. Yeah, I haven't so, even heard of it. Yeah, that's another anime movie that was kind of distributed in a small release in the West. Uh, yeah, I think it was like second grossing in Japan when it came out, and like yeah. it's the sixth most grossing international anime this year. That's yeah. Um, so this good this game or game uh, this movie was nice. very uh is very interesting. It gave off very um, Howl's Moving Castle like vibe yeah. to it. Uh, I, I implore you to watch the trailer because it's pretty good. This is one oh, of those yeah. cases though that I would totally say avoid the dub. The dub is <laughs> kind of bad. <laughs> it's not like most things. Not all. No, I most. like I. I'm pretty forgiving on dubs. So if I'm saying don't watch the dub, don't watch the dub. <laughs> mm. It's not horrible, but it's not good. And I think more so than your name, like, I think the problem with watching your name dubbed is that you miss some of the nuance that you probably would miss anyway, I guess, if you didn't. I think there's, I think there's a particular subset of of voice actors that that are decent in in dubbed anime, but I I feel that you should always, like, Well, let let me finish, let me finish what I was saying, okay? Sorry. Yeah, I, I would say in, in in with your name in particular, that game or that movie has a uh, there's some nuance that you might miss if you watched it dubbed, but mainly since it's kind of serious and and even in its tone, there's not really much reason to like you don't get that much more out of the actual voice acting as you do in Japan, especially compared to something like Mary and the Witch's Flower. Because in this movie, the characters emote kind of heavily, and they're very, like, active, and it just doesn't transfer the same way. Like, it, yeah. you can tell that it feels stilted when you're watching it, and they're trying to make the lip syncing look not awful. And, like, you yeah. can see the dub, like, work that yeah. they went into. And it's, whereas, like, extra bad. Yeah, whereas in, in Your Name, it didn't feel... It didn't feel like it was dubbed. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Whereas yeah, this one is. definitely did. Um, and on top of that, all of the voice actors are like English. 
which mm-hmm. is kind of interesting. Uh, so they're all kind of like not, they're not <laughs> big voice actors, and they're all kind of, it's it's kind of weird. I don't know. I I would definitely recommend watching this movie subbed, but you know, if right. if you're just gonna watch dub things anyway, go ahead. But it it, it was good. Um, not the best anime I've I've watched this year, but you know. I I definitely recommend it if you're interested in anime, but if you're if you're like not, then maybe don't. Yeah, fair uh, enough. Uh, it does evoke the the Howl's Moving Castle feel though, so if you want more of that, then it is good. And it's very. Um, I, I want to be clear. It's not a Miyazaki film. It is yeah, not. It is it not is a not. Miyazaki. It's not even a Studio Ghibli film. Yeah, um, um, but you can tell is... that it was very much going for that, just with the character yeah, in designs. Fact, it and... was um, made by like an anime studio that branched out of uh studio ghibli and sort of started their own thing i think it was after miyazaki retired and it's coming back now but right um it definitely has more of like a traditional looking uh like large canvas style like drawings you know what i mean yeah. does that make sense yeah. Vers- versus yeah, yeah. uh i don't know versus something that's kind of like almost simplified and kind of like fast in, in a like, lot of like, anime like films a lot of the new ongoing yeah. animes even right they have this i, I don't want to call it plasticky feel because that i feel like that does it a disservice but it's very much like i don't know like you can it's similar looking you, i guess it's it, not it heavily textured bad, but you can yeah. tell that it's like digitally animated and stuff right. like that you whereas can, this you can kind of like pick out for like two frame animations if you're looking for them no i wouldn't say that even no no because that that effect doesn't happen that much not 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 in not in films not in anime films right right because they're higher budget uh but yeah like it it definitely has those like kind of like howl's moving castle it has those large heavily textured set pieces in the same way right so yeah which Uh, is neat yeah it's cool it's very like pretty to watch if nothing else so exactly um yeah i i think it's good not gonna make it into my top ten year this year, I promise. But it it's good, so I don't know. Yeah. Neither is um what what was it? Twelve strong? Yeah, neither is twelve strong, but you know. Yeah. I mean it's a movie. It's a it's good. Yeah. I, I would recommend it if you like anime, especially if you want to get that Miyazaki feel. Yeah. Uh who wants to go next? Any other movies this week? I have not watched any movies this week. No. But I can talk. I you have either. watched some Mr. Robot. Do you want to talk about the first couple That's episodes true. of that? I think I've watched two episodes of Mr. Robot. Yeah, so far. Uh, the best I can say is, man, that show is fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's about a dude who is definitely... At least a social outcast. That's that's like like definitely what you can get from him. He 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 def- he like has problems with with talking to people, but we don't like. I would say it's fair. Really I, I would say it's fair to say he's a high functioning autistic. Like I think it's pretty. I I <laughs> I think it's I mean almost... I don't know if like yeah, like 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 that's what I want to say. But what I was kind of kind of trying to get at is you can't really tell if that's like an intrinsic issue that he has or if it came from his past life experiences at least at least as far as i've gotten you can't really tell if that's an intrinsic issue that he has well, or if it's i think there's hallmarks that you can definitely say like he has that thing where he's like no touching and that's true so i think yeah. there are definitely yeah, like aspects to it definitely want to hit towards that right hint so I think, that, I think it doesn't outwardly say so but if that sort of thing appeals to you that is a thing in that show right. for sure um but like there there's a there's a lot of drug use which it i mean that doesn't really bother me if it's it, you know it's on a tv show like like that's part of the part of the world part of building the characters um he he's a re- he's a really good hacker and whatnot but it's it's like that 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 i think is the main thing that's really cool about it there's 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 no like attack 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 oh not oh, techno babble it's not techno babble bullshit like to somebody who doesn't really know anything about computers it still would be techno babble bullshit but if you even have like a baseline knowledge of computers it sounds like a lot of what they're saying is like 
yeah, like, oh, in it, like, like, I think the very first scene, he was like, so, uh, you're here running this server for an onion site, and blah, 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 and there's a bunch of child porn, so, uh, and, and the other guy's like, well, you're extorting me now? And he's like, no, I just already called the police, bye. <laughs> yeah, I'm um, using this as an opportunity to gain social interaction, <laughs> is basically what that was. Yeah, he's, he's like, I, I'm not really good at socializing, and this is a coffee shop, so I'm coming here to, uh, try and socialize a little bit. Also, your child porn ring is down, so, uh, bye. <laughs> Have fun with the cops, asshole. <laughs> and like, like that kind of is the theme for the whole show. He like, I don't know. He he like hacks everybody because he he just like is a weirdo like that and wants to like hack everybody and know everything. It's like about compulsive, them. yeah. Yeah, it's it's like a compulsive thing with him. But also like, if he finds bad shit, he's like, oh, okay, well, time to time to make the world a better place. <laughs> kind of, and... but there are times where he's like, well. This is a bad guy, but the alternative, but get my, to, alternative get my might be here. worse, so maybe I don't mess with <laughs> yeah, this person. Exactly. And then he, he's like, a, very morally gray in that way. Like he he yeah. kind of makes his own code. Yeah, and like even in the first episode, like he's got like he's got like man, I really want to take down this big corporation, and these assholes are doing a good job at doing it. Should I work with them? Oh. They want to kill people. Uh, yeah, I quit. But it's like, like even then, it's it's like he's not just cut off, uninvolved. It's like he's he's still in it. And there's there's just a lot going on in Mr. Robot. It seems like it's a really neat show, and I it, it's definitely holding my attention. Which sometimes these shows that these two show me don't. But especially it, when it's, it's a show that, that, like, I think the show is kind of dense. So if you can't. Yeah. If you if can't you get through the first couple episodes, attention. you won't stick to it. Exactly. Yeah. But but I'm really liking it so far. I, I like I want to try and avoid spoilers and like yeah. you said, it's so dense. Even in the first two episodes, there are a lot of things I could say that are really spoilery. My favorite thing about it is that the narrator is kind of unreliable. Yeah. In the sense that you can't tell because he's he's narrating it and he's essentially talking to the viewer. And you mm -hmm. can't really tell if he's telling you the truth about everything. Right, or if, exactly. And you can't tell, like, if what he's seeing is what is, actu what is actually happening, because right, you, you like see for... everything through the lens of how he sees it, so he could just be making stuff up. Right. Like, like as an example, there's a, there's a company called E-Corp. Like, that is their actual name. It's E-Corp or something, and it's, it's very much like a it's big cyber cyber conglomerate like google or facebook or what have you just just a xp for those and early on in the first episode he says well they're fucking evil so i call them evil corp and and from that point forward in the show after they explain that um every character calls it evil corp. every every character in the show just says the word evil corp and obviously they aren't saying evil corp that's just how he's perceiving it so the show is very trippy. Yeah. I I really love it. So I'm gl I'm glad that you're into it. Yeah. No, I'm I'm really liking it. Um, but that's as far as things that I've watched. That's that's all I've really, all I've really watched. Um, I think mostly the only things that I've been playing this week is Subnautica because it just came out. You want to talk about that a little bit? I do want to talk about that. I definitely want to talk about that. Man, Subnautica is an experience. I believe I've talked about it on the podcast before, but now that it's out, there's there's a lot of quality of life stuff. There's a lot of bug fixes, but I do want to talk about one really, really horrible and scary as fuck bug that I've experienced a <laughs> oh. couple of times. Oh, boy. So if you're in your Cyclops, which is the big, big fucker submarine, and you are not the on the helm. The, the flying Yes, fucker yes, I've named, it, I've named it the fucker knot. It unfortunately does not fly. Yeah. Um, it swims. It swims. It does swim. Um, so, okay. I, I have to put a disclaimer here, though, because people are so adamant about the way that... Sub oh, sorry. Adamant about the way that Subnautica spoilers go that if you even talk about anything in the game, it, it can be considered a spoiler. So I want to say that... 
I am likely going to to say something that somebody at least might consider a spoiler, and there's no way to avoid it if I'm talking about Subnautica. Right. So, so just bear that in mind as the now discussing says Subnautica, you may hear spoilers. Yeah, I'll make a point to, to change it. So if you want to mute it and just kind of fast forward until, like, fast okay. forward if it's the bot or just not watch if if it's on uh, the live show. Then um, yeah, I'll, so... I'll I'll make sure to pay attention to that this time. So, so Cyclops, that, that's your big fucking submarine. It's huge. It's awesome. But if you are in a confined, it, it's still a submarine. And if you are in one of the very small confined spaces in the Cyclops and you stand there for too long, sometimes there is a bug where your Cyclops will drift, just kind of drift off to the side lazily. Normally, it's not a problem because your character will just kind of drift with it. But. If you are in a confined space, your character doesn't update as fast as the Cyclops is drifting, so sometimes you get squeezed through the wall. Now it's like, okay, I got squeezed through the wall, whatever, I'm swimming, I can just swim around and back into the Cyclops. No. What happens is you get shunted out of the Cyclops, but because you didn't go through a hatch that registers, oh, now you're in the water, you just kind of fall. And then you're walking. The oh, only way sucks. to res yeah, the only way to reset it is to find a place where you can fall far enough that the game registers. Wait a second, he's supposed to be in the water. So you fall really far down. Then you hear a sploosh noise as though you've gotten into water, and then you can swim back up. Dawson, you should be a video game bug tester, straight up. I you, you well, find I don't every I, single game you play you find the most obscure <laughs> random bugs like I, I, I'm not I, saying that, that in this case that's necessarily the case but I swear <laughs> it it's true I do I always get the most obscure bugs that like nobody else experiences and I like Google them and try and find fixes and like nobody's ever found this bug before it happens to me all the time there's also one bug there there's another bug this is a very minor bug. Now, now, this is definitely getting into spoiler territory. I was in an alien facility, and I was going through warp gates. I think, saying you were actually watching at this point. Okay. And I was going in and out of warp gates, right? And I, I, found a, uh, I found a warp gate. I went through it. I explored. It was, like, in an oxygenated area, so I was walking around. There was no water. I swear there was no water. I was walking. And I was like, hmm, okay, this is just a cave. And I looked outside. I'm like, all right, I know where I am. This is where this, this warp gate goes to. And so I go back towards the warp gate. And suddenly out, of, out from behind the warp gate, like it, I swear, the way that this bug presented itself, it looked like, like the thing had warped in. I think that it was just <laughs> bugged and it was, it, was, it was a fish. It was a fish called a bone shark. There... They're not particularly huge. They won't kill you in one hit, but they look really scary. And if you if you know they're there, you're expecting them. You're like, okay, I can dodge them, knife them, chase them off, whatever, right? But I'm walking around on dry land, <laughs> and this thing just swims in, in through midair, and, and the angle that it swims from makes it look like it warps out of the warp gate. So for a brief moment, I'm like, oh, God, is this a feature? Are they sending me bone sharks through these warp <laughs> gates? Oh, what do I do? And so I was like, no, fuck this. And I went back through the warp gate, and it, it didn't there follow is. me or anything. And that's when I realized I realized that it was a bug. And I was like, oh, thank God, it was just a bug. <laughs> I uh, don't want to have to deal with I, flying I feel, like, bone Dawson, I feel like you're forgetting another bug that you ran into. <laughs> The one where uh, multiple, almost multiple times, your uh, prawn suit fucking fell through the world. Oh yeah, yeah. One. Um. So, so I named my prawn suit Fuckbot Five Thousand. Yes. Five thousand and prawn... one. No, 5001. I named my first well, prawn suit Fuckbot okay. Five Thousand. I'm getting yeah. to that. <laughs> yeah. I was just yeah. walking around the ocean surface and just suddenly, I just fall through the world, and just my ba jump jets based on nothing. Based on nothing, just fall yeah. through that particular segment of floor, and it just falls and falls and falls, and my jump jets aren't strong enough to get <laughs> my jump jets aren't strong enough to get me back up, and so it's just falling infinitely. So I was like, you know what? 
I got on my prawn suit, I swam back up through the world. And if I find that spot, I know I can consistently go through it. There's just no nav mesh on that spot. That's I weird. can go go up and down through that spot. And <laughs> maybe it's, you it's should really maybe you weird. should tweet it at the uh, bug team. They might be able to fix that. Who knows? If yeah, you're maybe. able to be consistent, like consistently reproduce it, then they could fix it. That's true. They could just add a nav mesh there, huh? Um but yeah, so so now I have my fuckbot 5000 stuck through the world and I was like, "You know what? I literally just made this 10 minutes ago. Fuck this." And I used the the debug console to fix a bug by spawning a new by spawning a new pronsu, which I feel is fair. Yeah, that's it's called fair, a yeah. debug. It's called a deep disc. <laughs> I'm sorry, I want to point out a chat here says safe passage to the active lava zone. Yeah, that's pretty much <laughs> Yeah, I just went like like twelve million feet straight down. That's that yeah, it's pretty much exactly what it was. Um and and it uh yeah, no, it was it was neat. It was fun to find a bug like that in the stable release. I was bitching about it when it happened, but uh, after I spawned a new prawn suit, I named it Fuckbot5001. New and improved. Um, <laughs> That's and, funny. And yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm just, I'm really enjoying Subnautica. I found the... I'm gonna give another disclaimer. This is big spoiler territory. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait a couple maybe, seconds. Maybe, maybe don't. Maybe don't. don't. Yeah. Okay. We're we're all in spoiler. We're we're in all spoiler territory. Fair enough. So so the most recent thing I've done is I've gotten to the the sea. No, I mean maybe don't spoil no, it. Don't spoiler stuff. Yeah. Don't spoiler. Okay, that that should have been more clear. Well, no. I've said the, I've said the name. Oh but wow. That's that's about it. I've gotten I've gotten basically as deep as I can go, and I'm at at a point where I can get. Basically, I'm at a point where I can kickstart the process to go home. That's cool. I really, I really like it. Um, um, so I bought a one of those Windows mixed reality VR headsets. Uh huh. Uh, because they were on sale this last week. Um, I don't know if they're still on sale. <laughs> I got mine on Amazon. You can check. But uh, I'm like, it should come tomorrow, and I'm pretty excited to try some VR games. And I was thinking Subnautica, since it has VR support, would be like yeah, a perfect no-brainer to check out. So, yeah. No, no. Here's something I was hearing about it. I, I obviously I don't have a VR headset, um, and like I so I so I obviously this is not first-hand experience. This is second-hand storytelling. But I was reading a story. This guy loves Subnautica. He played it for for like years and years in development. And there's there's a creature in the game that you meet pretty early on called Reefbacks. They are gigantic fuckers. But yeah, they're space whales basically. They are enormous, just huge. And like even without VR, that you you can tell that they're massive, right? But this guy was telling a story. He played it for years and years, and he finally got a VR headset. He put it on, and he went up to to a reef back because they're 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 nice passive, even though they're they're gigantic. They're gigantic sea cows, yeah, and you know they're they're nice and passive. You can even like like clear barnacles off their back, get resources and stuff. They've got, they've got all kinds of cool stuff with them, and. He went up to it after playing this game for two years, knowing that these things are no danger. Even in fact, most most players actually like make friends with them. They feel nice and safe to be near. Myself included. I agree with that. Like whenever I, I go, I call them my homies. You know, I just go <laughs> go up to them. I'm like, hey, homie, how's it going? I go and pet them, break some barnacles, get some silver. I'm like, how you doing? Um, and and the experience in VR, he said, was so vastly different from him. He just, like it felt like he could reach out and like like no because of because of like it being more personal. It's first person, you know. You he he felt like he could try to reach his arms around the tendril. And was and he trying he to hug it? Knew, yeah. Well, he wasn't trying to hug it, as far as he said. But he said that he he knew that yeah. even well, I'm he, not trying to hug the big he space could well he could feel loser. he could feel that even if he had tried to wrap his arm around its little mobility tendril 
he wouldn't be able to. Like it was it was bigger than his arm span. He could like really huh. feel the sheer size of everything. Which it, I feel cool isn't an hell. it isn't an experience that you get without VR. Like you can tell they're big, but you can't really tell your own scale. Yeah. You know? yeah. Even I think, though you I know you're that's the a, size of a human. I think that's a pretty common thing in VR is that like when you're like having that one to one scaling, things that look relatively like small look gigantic. Um, yeah. I was hearing that about the PlayStation VR Skyrim uh, game or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, like, they were saying that playing that in VR really changes how it feels to play it because you'll see giant, like, straight-up cliffs that normally in Skyrim you can kind of, like, jank your way up. But in VR, Ooh, that, sl- that seat that feels so wrong... And mm-hmm. it, when you're on like such a huge incline or incline, it feels really weird to like look down and be uh, not on anything. <laughs> so it's I don't know. It's just it seems kind of interesting. Uh yeah. Um. Anything yeah, else to so touch on? I I don't really think I have much more to touch on in Subnautica besides go without going into spoiler territory, but. It's definitely a game that's worth it, and I think Sane was saying during my stream that once you get a little ways into the story, it it, it, it starts to feel really weird, because you're on this, like, yeah, you're on this alien planet, but there were, th- there were people living here before you. Some of them were humans, some of them were not humans, but they were definitely a human sapient species. And they were living here, and they were trying to accomplish essentially the same goals that you were, but they're dead now. So they didn't, obviously. So, the interesting thing to me about Subnautica is it's one of the few, like, survival-style games that I've ever seen that had any kind of coherent story that, like, like had any flow to it. Yeah! Just from the small bits and pieces I've watched of you play it, like, it... It has more story in those small bits of place er, pieces than the whole, like entire games in the same genre. So it's actually a lot more like compelling to me to go into and try. Yeah, um, like, yeah, right. especially with all of the story stuff. I, right, and now I, that I'm, it's I'm hit 1.0, there. I feel like now seems like the perfect time to check it out. Yeah, so. I, I, I do want to point out. Somebody in our chat says. Um, there might be an Arctic DLC. I forgot. I totally forgot about that. But when they released 1.0, they said their their plans for DLC might be like an Arctic biome, okay. which would be really cool to see. And I would want to see like Arctic. But that's also interesting because the entire game takes place on a small segment of ocean, which is in the crater of an active volcano. So it would be weird. I like how would how would you fit an Arctic area into the crater of an? What if the rest volcano? of the planet was Arctic and left the crater, or something like that? You know what I mean? Sure. Or yeah, maybe more it. maybe the uh, the volcano is in kind of a northern pole, or something. I, I, okay, I think yeah, you could yeah. do it. Like it might it go, might involve leaving the volcanic that? crater, but which is terrifying because if you go too far past the volcanic crater, you get to the void. And that's just filled to the brim with fucking ghost leviathans, which are the scariest shit in the game. Uh-huh. Even though I punched one in the face, I'm still scared. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he straight up fucking killed one. He specifically I, I did bitch. not kill one, but I oh. uh, beat I oh. beat the I beat the piss out of it, and it doesn't want to fuck with me anymore. Yeah, you also it, beat it still the shit does, out of a but... warper. What? I did. Also, I did. You also beat the shit out of a warper. I beat the shit out of all these things that I was terrified of. And I'm still terrified of them. <laughs> Ran around and punch, punch things with a prawn. Yeah, exactly. Um, so let's move on. Sure. Uh, is there any um, any other games you want to talk about? Um, I don't really think so. I don't think I've played much. I played a little bit more WoW. Um, the new leveling experience is still fun. I, I don't really have much to say about it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that's 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 how I feel because I played a lot of most of what I played this week was Eve. I bought a spaceship. And I did some mining, and I blew up some spaceships, and that's all I have to say. Did you hear that there was a uh, there was this huge yes sca- large yes, scale did. battle on Eve? <laughs> yeah, there, so there's there this was... huge scale battle yeah. on Eve. Um, that had like something like two million dollars of in-game currency worth of ships in the battle, but Jesus. the game got so laggy 
that probably only four thousand dollars in damage actually happened yeah. and everybody had to just kind of leave <laughs> yeah the, these people were going to make this huge push against this other uh this other corp and uh well didn't work out like they wanted to that's fucking crazy no. Yeah. So, so, being kind of a new player to Eve, do do you feel any of those ripple effects from where you're at? No. Like you don't Not really. There's no real. Uh, I've I've impact. been uh, what what I've been doing is I've been running around and mining in a very uh mining and blowing ships up and selling stuff in a very like specific closed off place. Uh, that so I I've been I've been mostly staying on like these particular shallows and just running the markets on these. Um, so none of that's hit me. I don't think I was, like, anywhere even close to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so well Eve is interesting. Kind yeah. of. It's a, it's a very, it's an interesting game. Uh, I, I, like I, I probably more... would like Eve if I actually put any time into it. I just haven't put any time well, into it. Well, I, I don't, I don't know about that, just because of the fact that it's, in the same way that Elite Dangerous, uh, is, and I, I feel like Elite Dangerous is much more of a game and is, you, you do things a little bit it works a little bit better than uh uh it, it works a little bit better than elite dangerous um, my problem my problem with elite dangerous was not that i didn't enjoy the things i was doing i just felt like they had no impact yeah so i feel and like was... in eve if they have some sort of impact towards my overall progress then yeah i might be and more that's... interested into in it mm -hmm. so i yeah, i don't know that thing, my, like, my I... issue with eve is just that i'm afraid to dive Even into it, it yeah. and actually like have it i'm i'm afraid of being consumed by it even though i i probably don't have that much reason to worry well, but my yeah. problem with eve is that i had abs like after all of the tutorial missions were done i did every single one of them i had all this cool shit and i had absolutely no direction whatsoever yeah and that's the like, thing uh I like, like i, I want to make about... money i'll go out and mine I don't know. I've played some space sims that really have no direction. Mm. Yeah, and that's so, uh, like I was talking about the X Games the other the the other week, and yeah, that no direction in those to the point where I messed up and played like the wrong mode that gives you so that doesn't even like give you the tutorial missions that we had in Eve, and mm. it was like I have no idea what the fuck to do. Uh, okay, well, time to figure this shit out for a month. Yeah, yeah, it was ridiculous. Although at that point, I I kind of check out a lot of them too. So yeah, yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe I, I I guess there's as high a potential as I could check out where you did Dawson, but there's I, a decent potential I, I could be where Fell's at too. I'm not. Sure, I think the most sure. fun you can have in Eve is joining a core and doing stuff. And I've tried. You literally, not figuratively, literally have to yeah. for most legitimate cores go through an actual job interview process you yeah. have to submit a fucking well here's resume, actually what i heard application they interview you to make sure you're right for their core and then they call you back in two to three weeks on the telephone yeah yeah like, well here's here's what i ridiculous. heard um that uh what you were trying to do is jo probably join one of the big cores but you with the base the the be and the best thing to do it because the big core is uh are like horribly snooty assholes is to just join one of the smaller cores that's I was trying to join a new player help core. Yeah, it, which was probably pretty big. Why would a new player help core be that snooty? They're the here to help new players. That's the idea. <laughs> uh yeah, you, 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 you this is Eve. Ridiculous. That yeah. that that sounds like the kind of corporation that is like We'll help you play Eve for real. <laughs> yeah. Whereas yeah. some of the casual ones are just like, we're not playing Eve for real. We're just playing. Yeah. Eve. We just set up this fucking like mining operation and this uh the these stations over here on like these couple of systems and uh we're just fucking making a little bit of money. We're not doing anything big. Right. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, it it seems. Yeah. It is. It is. It is kind of crazy. Fuck. I honestly, I almost want to make my own core just to create my own fucking mining rigs and stuff like i did in the x games yeah like you know what i had to do to go to go through to get into one of the like really big old raiding guilds in wow i was like hey can i join they're like yeah sure and then they're like okay well you're on a two-week probation period if you're an asshole we're gonna kick you and uh after that you can come on raids with us 
Like, yeah, that's okay. it. That's all it was. And it was like, okay, yeah, this is a video game. I understand you don't want assholes creeping around. You don't have to interview me. Yeah, but I think there's a lot more potential for, like, See what kind of college stealing things have, like, in EVE. Like, I think yeah. there's a lot more room yeah. for, like, actually sabotaging and stealing and destroying things from the inside that you kind of can't do in other games. <laughs> so. That's true. That's true, I guess, yeah. And and that's I think a lot of the uh interview process is just because they don't want people from other from rival companies <laughs> sabotaging each other. I think that's I yeah. I really think that's what a majority of it actually is. That makes sense. Eve is a game about corporate sabotage on the internet. It kind of it, 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 imagine is. corporate <laughs> sabotage but with horrible neck beards. Honestly, it's the best game ever made. So regular I, I don't even sabotage. think it's neck beards. Like there's like ambassadors and there's like government officials and stuff who play mm -hmm. eve like eve is yeah. just eve is just like a nebulous thing yeah and uh i i get i get i get like this uh you know i get that really nice uh, well one of the things that really keeps me coming back to eve is that i do get that really nice like visceral pleasure from just watching my fucking money counter go up so <laughs> good oh, i sold all this shit at a higher price oh watch that bitch climb Mm, yeah, buy my new ship. So Bring we, me close to a battleship, bitch. Mm. So we have a lot of news to get to. Do you guys have anything yeah. else to talk about before we transition? I think not really. I talked about we talked about you for a surprisingly long time. We've only been yeah. going for forty minutes, so why don't we take the why don't we not take a break yet? We'll um okay. go into some gaming news first, and then we'll take a, a break down the line. Sure, that sounds good to me. Because the because the game because the news has been like sort of building up over the last two weeks, and it finally there's finally a lot of it now. Yeah, it's really quiet, and then boom! Hey, here we are. We got lots. Okay, so, so you know more about this one than I do, Dawson. But uh, the Twitch viewbot makers thing. Why would I know more about that? You're the one who posted I mean, I the do, article. But... Yeah. Did I? Oh yeah. yeah. Huh. <laughs> okay, I, I so... don't know anything about this. So yeah. okay, fair. Well, I do know. I In that case, I do know more about it than you do. So, for a long, long time, there was um, a service where you could pay, service, quote-unquote, that you could pay that would basically send a bunch of view, viewer bots to your channel so that you could, and they would, like, watch your channel and follow you so that, basically, it was made to boost boost you into the partner program show that yeah like uh, okay well you have 75 average viewers now you can apply for the partner program or just right would just artificially inflating numbers and artificially stuff. inflate yeah. your viewer numbers so that you would be higher on the list so yeah. people would be more likely to see your stream and you would get real viewers now twitch has sued them and they have been ordered to pay almost 14 million dollars in recouped losses because twitch's claim is that having those those view bots is is causing well it puts stress it, on their it, servers yeah, and like it puts it, stress on their servers it, but it creates but, like but a lot of dummy accounts that like have to be tracked and stuff so but, there's, there's a but lot their of real it. their real claim like like their main claim here is that Twitch is meant as a platform for entertainment. If people are being artificially boosted into the partner program or even just the affiliate program, um, they then then maybe they're not really entertaining streamers. The intention behind the partner program is to put streamers into a program where they are partnered with Twitch so that Twitch can use those streamers to bring revenue to their website, and those streamers in right. return will get a chunk. It's, it's basically like having an employee almost. Yeah. And if you're artificially trying to boost your numbers into the, the partner program, then you know, you're not really worth, like you're not bringing anything to Twitch, and therefore they're losing money by trying to give this partner program to people who aren't really bringing anything into their website. Exactly. That's why you um, should support us. Yeah. By watching us on Twitch. Yeah, I'm, and, I'm sorry. I'm YouTube. sorry. I you was wrong. It was bullshit. it was 1.4 million in oh. in losses, not 14 million. I, okay. I just misread the article. Okay. Uh, but that's still that's Yeah, that's still, still a million dollars. Yeah, yeah. So it's still, still a million dollars. Million dollars is nothing to shake a fucking stick at. It's just a lot. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, basically 
also view botting is shitty what's the point like if, if you ask me like having two or three people sitting there talking to you ha engaging in a conversation while you play a video game is way more entertaining than watching a number go up that just says people are watching and then there's no, no interaction at all yeah like, exactly the there's there's no point yeah <clears throat> all right do we want to move on to the next thing sure uh okay Okay, so the next thing is n another thing that's Twitch related. There was an ESL controversy. Uh, is it the Dota one? Yes, it yes, is the oh, Dota boy. two one. Yeah, so Valve releases a statement on the Dota TV streaming uh, service after ESL basically issued DMCA's on people because okay, let, let's back up a second. Well, so the ESL, the ESL was doing a tournament for Dota um on dota tv or whatever and well it wasn't on dota TV. yeah no dota yeah but the, the, it was service. it was on it was on facebook thing. right so in order to watch the tournament uh you had to log into facebook which not everybody has a facebook account and mm -hmm. you had to watch there uh and when people tried to mirror the stream on twitch uh at least four or five people were issued dmca notices now now, I would like to point out something real quick. The They were not grabbing off of the Facebook stream. What They were, they were using the in-game client to spectate the tournament games. Okay, I guess that, that is an important that distinction. that to Twitch. That is, that is an important distinction. If they were restreaming the Facebook content, that would be a legitimate DMCA note. Well, I don't think that would be a legitimate DMCA. Well, I guess, yeah, I guess it... De it's it's, right, it's it, a little it, less gray. It, so, well, yeah. right. I guess it depends gray, if the say. ESL have the overlay and camera view stuff, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, Valve put out a statement saying that the the first issue we've been seeing discussed is regarding DMCA notices. This one is very simple. No one besides Valve is allowed to send DMCA notices for games streamed off of Dota TV that aren't using the broadcaster's unique content, such as camera movement, voice, etc. So that essentially means that e ESL was not allowed to issue dmca notices at all because they don't own the copyright on that that's just yeah that's mm. cut and dry um um no, and because... well let me just finish this okay. real quick the, yeah. uh and valve went on to say the second issue regarding who is permitted to cast off of dota tv we designed the dota tv guidelines to be flexible in order to allow for up-and-coming casters or community figures like bsj or Bulldog that occasionally watch tournament games on their channel to be able to stream off of Dota TV it is Two not to allow who were, noted, who were issued DMCA notices and banned from Twitch. Right. It is not allowed, or it is not to allow commercial organizations like BTS to compete with the primary stream. It'll be our judgment alone on who violates this guideline and and not any other third parties. Um, the the leader of the ESL also put out a. a message later that said if you want other tournaments that aren't the international you have to like be willing to play ball but that's kind of like short-sighted um uh, maybe just don't make deals with facebook like it was a bad plan yeah i, I don't know pretty much uh and the fact that like man dmca is just dumb like yeah. it, it constantly the... is being used incorrectly mm -hmm. um those streamers who were banned have had their Twitch accounts restored, not even in light of uh, Valve's statement, just in light of the fact that the DMCA notice was wrong in the first place, before Valve even said anything. Um, it gets into a weird issue, like... Like, if, if you are... It, it's, the same, it's the same thing as, like, the Let's Player issue. Yes, Dota is somebody else's content, but are you like 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 you are the one who is adding your own stuff you're controlling right, that, the camera motion see there yeah. there is an aspect of free use where if you make it transformative then you can argue that but that's a defensive mm -hmm. uh like a defensive strategy that is not something that like the thing with DMCA is well, obviously, this in this case, they just didn't have the copyright, so they weren't allowed to do it in the yeah. first place. That's the biggest yeah. issue here. Um, like, they didn't hold the DMCA copyright. Yeah, they could yeah. not do it. The second thing is that um, 
if they were to DMCA something that is transformative, then the person could fight fight it in court, essentially, and use DMCA, the fair use portion of it to of copyright law to defend themselves versus um a lawsuit so right it, it's it's not a proactive measure it is a defensive measure and that makes it really hard to fight dmca claims so that's part of the problem that that's exactly. why it like all of copyright law needs to kind of be reformed because it's kind of messed up right now especially yeah. with with like youtube and twitch and, and that sort of thing Mm-hmm. And the entirety of the internet, I'd say, like the whole gosh darn internet has made copyright law a little bit crazy. Internet's doing that for a lot of stuff. Thanks, internet. Thin internet. Yeah, yeah. Um, thin internet. <laughs> internet. Yeah. Okay, um, so you you have anything else, or should I move on? No, I think that's about it. I just find it. The, the 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 whole situation was weird. Just they were streaming the tournament from their own thing, but somebody else was spectating the tournament in the Dota client, completely independent of them. Like and they th- it, and they thought they had the right to DMCA. They it's they just... they thought they had the right. Like there's no way. Like I have no idea how they could think that because yeah. because the, these people were streaming off of the Dota client, completely independent of their their thing. Like, if and they I think, wanted and to use I was kind private of hearing, servers or something. I was kind of, I don't know how true this is, but I was kind of hearing that people were on Twitter hearing about this stuff and started to tune out of Facebook because of it. Yeah, people were, like, leaving the Facebook stream. Right, like, kind of in protest, which is just another layer that's kind of funny. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> All right, so the next thing we want to talk about is... Uh, Xbox is doing a is updating their Game Pass. So this is their uh this is their program that lets you for ten dollars a month play a large back catalog of games. Um this week they re- they announced that they're going to add Xbox One exclusives day one um to the Game Pass setup. So essentially for what is essentially hundred and twenty dollars a year if you play pay two ga- or if you play two games that come out at sixty dollars um you would essentially be making your money back on this and they said it is that incredible and they yeah. said that crackdown three sea of thieves and state of a k2 are all confirmed for this but they also said that um in the future with more halo properties and more um Gears of War properties and has, stuff like that uh... Once the console actually actually has exclusives, this will be really, really viable. You'll love it. Well, I mean, you can still go back and play the other Gears of War and the other Halo properties. So, like, there there is a lot to it. Yeah. Um, Uh, yeah, For, for, like, old games, this is great. I I really like this this because one of my biggest problems with online console gaming is that paying money to access the internet features when you are already paying money this is separate this is separate money. from yeah. Xbox Live. Oh, is it? Yeah, oh. this is this is okay. entirely separate. Well, so this is $10 for just the game access. Uh Xbox mm-hmm. Live is a separate fee. So uh, So, okay, uh well. do you need Xbox Live to be able to do this? You don't need Xbox Live to do this, okay. but right. if you want to play any of these games online, then yes you would. So something okay. like Sea of Thieves would be useless without Xbox Live, for instance. Yeah. Buy that bitch on the PC, you don't have to pay for Xbox Live on that shit, the fuck. That's, yeah, well, you know. But <laughs> and, and that's and that's a big problem with the Xbox's um, exclusives, it's, is just it, like, coming now, exclusively content. on Xbox. And also PC, don't tell. Yeah, and, and the thing is, I think it, it's kind of not 100% settled on whether or not, like, all of these will be day one date on, uh on play anywhere but a lot of these games yeah. are play anywhere so potentially if you had this game pass you could pay ten dollars a month um and then play like sea of thieves on xbox or on playstation right mm-hmm. or not on playstation i'm sorry PC. on pc <laughs> using the play anywhere stuff so okay. potentially you could not own an xbox and play all of these through the pc or not all of them obviously but the ones that are uh 
Xbox anywhere. So, like, a lot of the back catalog wouldn't work because they are just solely Xbox games, but some of them you would be. Yeah, like, Sea of Thieves for sure, probably. Sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves Thieves is definitely Play Anywhere. Yeah, Sea of Thieves was announced to to work. Will this service give you Play Anywhere, or? Sea of Thieves, I I believe, has been confirmed to work. For uh, now for I have another question. Anywhere and another thing. Now, 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 now I have another question. Do you have to continually pay for this service? If you stop paying for this service, do you lose your license for the game? Yes. <laughs> okay. Because what you're not, you're not licensing any games. You are accessing a catalog while you pay. It's like Netflix. Oh, so, it's like- so you don't own like even though like uh, the Xbox Play Anywhere game or the Game Pass or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, does have the advantage of you can download this to your console and play to your console. So it's not the like it's not the streaming thing that PlayStation does. So it is like full full games, but it it is kind of like Netflix in that if you cancel your Netflix subscription, you suddenly can't access Netflix. The same thing. Right. So right. That that's the sense. idea. So so so, in the end, if you only wanted one or two games out of this, it would be more economical to buy it. If you ex- expected if, to play it for a long time, if you expected to play more than two full price games a year, then yes. Um, yeah. And then there's also games that, like, you get their full ba- back catalog, so you get to play like all of the Halo games, right. uh, include like the Master Chief Collection and the Halo Five and um, the Halo Five. The Halo Five. There's the Halo also 5. it's the fifth Halo. There are also some like. Uh, my grandson wanted the Halo Five. Oh, Halo I Five. There's Halo also five. some. Yeah. There is some thirty third party support too. So uh, Bioshock Infinite and the Ma- Metal Gear Solid franchise are also there. So there's, Ooh. there is some stuff, and Metal oh, Gear yeah. Solid Five is really good. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely, definitely. And if you've only played that one, I haven't Halo played Wars. the rest of the Metal Gear games. It might be worth it for that. Yeah, things like Dead Rising, Mad Max. Just in case for some ungodly reason you want to play an RTS on a console. Saints Row games, Gears of War, the old Fable games. Ooh. Uh, so I don't know. If, I don't know all Xbox of the old Fable exclusives. Games. It's it's Microsoft property. Right, but yeah. some some of it's third party, but but a lot of it is like just anything right. my, at Microsoft owns. Yeah, essentially makes sense. Um, well, that's pretty nifty. Yeah, that includes a lot of 360 games. I, I guess maybe I wasn't clear on that, but yeah. Um, that might make me buy an Xbox, like honestly, <laughs> because they're they're actually pretty cheap. Yeah, now. that's it's a really good service, but it's also I would like to point out it is a service that PlayStation has offered for a while. It's not exactly the same thing, not a huge back catalog, but every month if you're paying for, I don't think it's I don't basic think it's internet access. See, I don't think it's that comparable to PlayStation Plus because. The way PlayStation Plus works is when you subscribe each month, they give you PlayStation Plus games. Um, but there's Which like to keep. keep only while you're subscribed, though, and it's like two or three games a month, and you don't get any retroactively. So it's like if I subscribe today to PlayStation Plus, then I would get this month's PlayStation Plus games added to my account, and as long as I had PlayStation Plus, I could access those games. Um, Game Pass is a little bit more free in that you can play anything from their back catalog. Right. Um, so actually, I think it's a, a better deal by, like, a lot. So, uh, the only thing is PlayStation Plus does come with, um, multiplayer access, which, uh, Xbox Live is separate. So that's the other thing. Yeah. I don't know <clears throat> if there's Xbox a ton of Xbox the- games I would even bother playing online, to be honest. Like, those aren't the games I'm really that interested in. Xbox does do the free games every month currently. Well, yeah, that's uh, that's Xbox games. games for Gold, which I think is part of Xbox Live. That's, that's separate. Pretty, that's that's pretty good. So yeah, Games for Gold is like the the equivalent of PlayStation Plus, whereas Game Pass mm-hmm. is a separate thing. Right. Um. Okay. Let's move on. So okay, this one's kind of a a weird story. Um. Oh boy. So, YouTube has a... So, for musicians, YouTube promotes using their, mm. uh, their, I don't know, promotion pages or whatever. They Part of their contract is musicians on YouTube aren't allowed to be critical of YouTube as a platform. 
What in the fuck? As I part of the deal it? for being uh, promoted on YouTube through their music thing. That's ridiculous. Well, the truth is, uh, the only reason that like uh, shows on Fox aren't able are are uh, The Simpsons specifically is the only show on Fox that's able to be critical of Fox. Family Guy does it too. Money they get. They, they, it's in their contract. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if it's specifically in the contract, then keep going, saying I'm sorry, I interrupted you. No, it's okay. I was. I, I'm sorry if I I was actually reading a little bit of this article while while you were talking. So. Oh yeah, go ahead. Uh yeah, so it says uh Google has given a handful of emerging emerging artists like 140,000 euros each to promote or produce videos and promote their work um right. as part of a campaign to improve the site's relationship with the music industry. But um and this a lot of this is kind of like not officially sourced but very likely to be going on. If right. that makes sense, like it, it's yeah, basically yeah, yeah, yeah. un unattributed sources, but yeah, there's a lot of them. Essentially, yeah. saying there are strict gagging clauses in exchange for the promotional export uh, support, and uh, YouTube's yeah. actually had kind of a rocky history with musicians in general in the past, so this kind of makes sense. Right. I don't really know that there's that much to say about this, but I just thought that it it was worth bringing up that YouTube is kind of doing this kind of thing. Uh, for something specific. So, it's and while this doesn't strange. apply to other partners, uh, like Logan Paul, for instance, it yeah. does it does <clears throat> happen for some of YouTube. So that's worth being aware of that they're not a bastion of free speech like a lot of people kind of want to. Everyone, leave. I don't know who yeah. the fuck says that anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, it's more and more it this. The perception of YouTube is changing, so. Yeah. Everyone hates YouTube because, and and YouTube has done nothing but get worse. <laughs> like, like every, everyone's been shit-talking YouTube. Uh, I remember it was like, uh, fucking. It's like, I think the problem with YouTube is it's almost like one step forward, two steps back. Yeah. They give you something no. cool, and then you they take some stuff away, and it's kind of like this push and pull, so. I remember... It was like, uh, Donkey's fucking, he did, like, this YouTube rewind for 2016 that was, like, a joke, like, fuck you, YouTube. It's, like, 90% of the people, it's, like, just people that year going, like, what the fuck, YouTube, YouTube, you piece of shit. You, God damn it, YouTube. It wasn't even, like, doing anything specific. It was just motherfuckers getting pissed off at YouTube for one reason or another. Yeah, you he know, just collected a bunch of YouTube yeah. clips. It's pretty, Oh, yeah. YouTube, it was something. man. Jeez. Come on. Uh, and, and the problem is, it's like, it's YouTube's got us by the balls. It's where the fucking viewers are. That's, that's exactly. where you get the that's shit. That's what people watch. Yeah. yeah, people go to YouTube to watch the shit. Uh, I don't know, though. So I feel like the... Patreon. I feel um, like we're getting closer and closer to YouTube being disrupted by another company. Yeah. Because there's so much bad will surrounding YouTube that... Mm -hmm. Like, if you kind of look at this in history... YouTube is super dominant right now, but so were a lot of other <laughs> companies 10 years ago. You know what I mean? Yeah. That don't yeah, exist fucking today. Ya so, fucking Yahoo and AOL. MySpace. MySpace, MySpace yeah, used yeah, like, to be Facebook, and yeah, now yeah. it's gone. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah MySpace it's, is fucking nobody, dead. Nobody uses MySpace. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's the thing. Uh, if, if, so, if someone can jump on the YouTube, this big YouTube need um then that's great if they can do it the same way that the youtube is doing it you can find us fucking there a lot of people are like going uh i'm gonna switch to daily motion or v Vimeo a lot of people and... are switching to twitch yeah yeah uh, it, like very like i would not be surprised if very soon amazon just makes a youtube competitor on twitch integrated yeah. with twitch i'm like, sorry a non-live version of twitch wait did you did you not know you can upload no. videos. To no, Twitch you can now. do it as a premiere thing, but I mean, yeah. I they're, they're going to, I think they're going to take that further. Yeah. Or like, yeah. like I I don't mean that. Yeah, I know that there's some like support for like archived content and stuff, but I think it's going to turn around. And... Oh, it's not just archived content. No, I know, can, like, I know the debut yeah, system. Yeah, no, I know yeah, what yeah. I know what you're talking about. Okay. But okay. I'm saying like, there has been some support for that kind of thing, but I think like. Coming up, it's going to just turn into 
you upload videos to Twitch and people watch them on Twitch. Like, that's... I, I don't know. Yeah. I think that Amazon is in a very unique position to de dethrone YouTube like no one else. Yeah. And Amazon is probably the most well-liked company of all yeah. of the major tech giants right now. So... Yeah. Um, also, what, what was I going to say? Uh, I just wish that Amazon that, would it, sell it, booze. It, it's very, um, <laughs> it's, uh, like, 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 uh, Twitch is great for, like, especially, like, gaming YouTube channels. Because Twitch is such a game, like, Twitch game is focused streaming. on gaming. Even yeah, when it was exactly, Justin, exactly. The thing is, like, YouTube Justin. is so TV, much, so I feel like, was... uh, the, it, would, it would have to be, like, just, Something sl well, slightly different. In a way, yeah. Twitch has even pulled back a little bit from that. Like, there's a lot of non-gaming content on Twitch now. Like, if you mm -hmm. go into the IRL feeds, people do, like, crafts. They do art. They do... There's lots so, of different well, that's, stuff. that's creative, but people yeah. even, like, well, just yeah. go out on their phone and just, like, eat at McDonald's and, like, do <laughs> funny stuff. And it's just, like... It's basically, like, live blogging. Isn't there a whole it's section just for eating? Yeah, or, social hey eating. guys, social it's eating. uh, yeah, John Gamer here. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a speed run for Big Mac. Yeah, but I mean, like, like how I, like, I how hard would it be? How hard would it be to transition live live social eating to food reviews, vlogging? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, reviews, yeah. What, what was it? Uh, another thing. Uh, alternatively, now that you mentioned it, there's like fucking Pinterest videos. Um, also, Vine 2 is coming out. Vine 2. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, Vine 2. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. V2, yeah, but yeah. That's is dumb. it called V2? It's, it's called is, V2. That is dumb. The, the, the Vine people are crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to read this chat message. Speed run for Big Mac eating. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's great. Okay, uh, let's move on to the next seconds. thing. 25 seconds. Uh, uh, so this should not come as a shock to anybody, but let me just uh, open this up. This is a little bit lighter, so, well, I don't know, depending on how you look at it. So, uh, Bioware has delayed Anthem, <laughs> to nobody's surprise, um, to second quarter, or uh, fourth quarter of 2018. Was Anthem that game that I got that, like, everybody else was super sour on, and I was like... Right. Okay. It looks like shit, but power armor though. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, you you yeah! were very into, you were really into it, but Thel and I were very tempered on it. Yeah, uh, it we is were like ah, fuck Bioware. It's a it's, EA published game again. Um, I think it's because they did that style of of trailer where it was like, okay, guys, we're going into the mission. We're we're uh, and uh, this is this is like a regular live. I don't care about that. Time. Actually, I've always been like. I know that a lot of gaming press give that shit, but I've always been the person like, oh yeah, that's cool, that makes sense. Like, I wouldn't be that weird about it, but yeah, like, I totally I don't think that. anybody would, and that's why people give it shit. Like, yeah, nobody's but like, that weird about it. <laughs> I mean, I've... The Division and what was the other, uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands, like, those are all games where they did that, but it's like... Yeah. <laughs> there are moments when we play games like that where we do stuff like that. Like, actually, it's, it's probably we do it the most in something like Player Unknown. They yeah. just don't yeah. show the like half an hour of us goofing off while doing it. I, <laughs> so, I, I yeah. watched, yeah, yeah, I watched a YouTube video once where like a guy just he was playing with his friends and he just started doing that and his friends weren't in on the joke and he was like, "All right, guys, I'm gonna crawl around this window here." Oh, there's a bogey on the front, and they're like, "What the fuck are you talking about, dude?" <laughs> there, there's a, there was a. I actually think it might have been a vine. Copy that. I think it might have been a vine, but there was like a clip of like this guy in um, uh, go uh, or the division rather, where uh -huh. he was like Tango Tango Roger Roger, and he was like talking about all like talking about like using really heavy, like, military jargon, and he was just going on for, like, ten minutes, and then he just was, like, he ran off, and the other people were like, oh, okay, dude. <laughs> yeah, the uh, other people were like, shut the fuck up, guy, what are you talking about? Um. <laughs> yeah, actually, I, 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 Division's been... Oh, I'm sorry, just one second. Division's okay. been getting a lot of weird love lately, because a, a lot of people have been leaving the Destiny scene. So, like... Just huh. oddly, oddly, a lot of people who are super into Destiny are now moving to Division. 
Hmm. It's just because because that's one of the places that's like a similar game to go to, I guess. Right. Like, it, yeah. yeah. Essentially, it's just it's similar enough I that was, people are I, into it. I was really impressed with the division when I played it, but in hindsight, like it just it wasn't very like there were like four whole enemies to fight. Yeah. And in in three set pieces. In the division's <laughs> defense, though, uh, Ubisoft has been really good about supporting their games post launch, so. And <laughs> Which actually we have a story about. And in Bungie a hasn't. <laughs> and no, Bungie is garbage at that kind of. Like Taken King kind of saved Destiny One, right? Yeah. So you could you could say that, you know, in a similar way they did support it post launch. But then when Destiny Two came out, they it it's almost as if they stripped out a lot of what made Destiny One Destiny One. And have slowly been re-adding it through the through the Eververse and through stuff that people aren't happy with. So I don't know. I don't know. I I don't want to like just shit on Destiny over and over again, but I fell off of it really fast. So yeah, which uh, I'm kind of disappointed because I was really hyped for Destiny Two coming to PC. I always always wanted to play Destiny One, and I was so disappointed that I couldn't. And Destiny Two was coming to PC, and I was like, yes, 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 and we played it for, like, I don't know what, a grand total of, like, 12 hours, maybe? Yeah, well, yes, for something like a week, we played uh, for several hours every night, but we never got into it nearly as much as a lot of other people did. We didn't even make it to the raid, so. Which I, I kind of am sad about. Like, I almost want to go back and just finish up some of the end game content, but I don't know, like, the more, the more negative stuff... But no, I think you can do like the the basic bitch the, version of basically everything. the non-heroic raids. <laughs> yeah, you can do all of the the basic ones. I think yeah. still, but yeah, I don't know. It, like with all of the negative news surrounding Destiny, it's just soured me to it more and more. Uh, yeah. And and everybody seems to be going to either Warframe or the the Division, so that's just kind of funny. Well, I find it weird that people are going to Warframe from Destiny because thematically it is very similar. So similar that I named my character in Destiny John Warframe. Yeah, so, but but that's the thing. Like, uh, it's very similar in theme, but in gameplay, in content, in gameplay yeah. it is like way yeah, fucking in, different. And the content there's more. It's more content rich by a right. metric ton. But, so. In, in fairness, it's had, like, something like eight years to develop its content, and Destiny, compared to Warframe... Well, sure, but if you weird. add Destiny 1 and Destiny 2, it's like they hiccuped halfway through, so... Yeah, yeah, it's I don't true. know. It's, it's, it's strange. Getting back to Anthem, though, um, this... It, it's... There's a lot of signs that Anthem is essentially... DOA? An existential thing for Bioware. If this game does not do well, Bioware might close. <laughs> Straight oh, yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, existential well, I would is, say is the oh, perfect no. word for what you meant. But like, but like when you said it, yeah, the first I said thing, it kind like, of in the wrong yeah, order. Yeah, it, it it just makes me think: Is Anthem going to be Bioware's art project? No. But is this going to be their horrible garbage attempt at one? I sure hope so. I, I think that, yeah. I, I guess what I meant is Anthem doing poorly yeah. is an existential threat on Bioware. Bioware, yeah. 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 Bi like, if this game doesn't succeed, it might ruin the game. They are saying, though, that they are looking, they, you know, they learn some stuff from Mass Effect Andromeda. They're learning stuff from Destiny. Don't make a shitty and, game. You know. and Destiny and yeah. other games who have released to poor you know, reviews or whatever. Exactly, yeah. Like, for example, if if your game is so buggy that people are making reviews about it before it comes out and all they mention is bugs, then maybe you should look at that before you release it maybe. instead of after. And <laughs> there's a lot of speculation that a, the reason why it's being delayed is because Battlefront did so... Battlefront's um, monetary system was so bad that they're rebuilding <sighs> progression in anthem oh. so rebuilding progression hopefully so that you don't have to spend a fuck tillion dollars well, to right do so that you yeah. so that money isn't money and loot boxes aren't tied to your progression because loot boxes become a dirty word even to like uh even to ea a little bit at this yeah. point yeah yeah even in light like like i don't feel this way this is not my personal feelings but after battlefront pit came out 
even Overwatch started getting a lot of flack about their loot boxes. Yeah. And like like people, some people were saying Overwatch loot boxes is doing it right. Some people are saying, well, they have loot boxes too. Fuck them. It's like, and Overwatch has absolute. It doesn't even have progression in the game. Like like it's pure cosmetics. And that's how loot boxes, I feel, can be done right, especially if you can earn them. But, t- like, giving any player any amount of power through loot boxes is kind of bad, If, you- especially if there's a buy-in. Like, that- yeah. that's just sleazy. Speaking of that... <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, hold on a second. Uh, okay, yeah, sorry. You guys remember... When Bioware was a company that made um, very good, very incredibly well written, story heavy games, and that was like their yes, uh, yeah, kind of... yes. Kotor one and two are two of those games that will always hold up to me. For me, I will always love both of those games. Kotor one and two are what gave me an appreciation for Star Wars as a whole, and even like, if some even... of it is decanon. Even no, but, like, if you don't... I yeah. I feel like if you pull Bioware out of that conversation, no, they haven't. <laughs> if you exclude Bioware, what have they made that was really good that was story-driven? Did you say EA? Wait, did they say EA or Bioware? No, I said Bi- Bioware. Oh, you said Bioware? I was talking... Yeah, yeah I said Bioware. Oh, I thought you yeah. said EA, remember when No, EA... yeah, when the yeah. fuck has EA even made like... something that was... No, 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 no. You EA made Bioware. Soundfall, like, fuck that, no. like Jade Empire, that was like yeah. a really B-list game. Not a lot of people played that, but I really like Jade Empire even. Oh, and also uh... that reminds me, uh, part of this... This was kind of a, a minor headline in all of this, but, um... It's con- it's now kind of confirmed offhandedly that they're working on another Dragon Age game. <laughs> Yeah. Oh boy. Well, and that's and that's and another Dragon thing. Age, that's Re- another one. Dragon Remember Age back, Dragon Age great. One was fucking great. And it Dragon had... Age Two was bad, but then Dragon it Age started... Inquisition was good again. Yeah. Which is really weird because Dragon Age Two got all the hype, and Dragon Age Inquisition was like, "Oh, this is gonna be dog shit." Well, and then just made no the... one talked about it because they were wrong. They just and made then, the yeah, wrong no decisions, I think, following. Yeah. And, I don't and, know. And I like, had my my ex girlfriend was super into Dragon Age. She bought a PlayStation Four to play Dragon Age Inquisition. So. Like, ah, uh, I and then and it's like and it's like you know the first you look at the first two Mass Effect games and you can see immediately when the downfall had begun. Like you you see Mass Effect Three just being this pile of fucking dog shit after they replaced the entire writing team. And since then, I don't feel like like. Like, Bioware has been slowly moving away from Stupor being the super good writing company. And, like, with Anthem, I don't see that at all. I don't see people hyping this up for the writing at all. I see it's, like, a game with mechs in it, and that's why it's And, cool. and like, four-player co-op. It looks yeah, like, like four-player co-op. It looks and, at, like their attempt at Destiny. Yeah, yeah, and I don't... But that could be good, because part of Destiny's problem was that the story was so bland and uncompelling. Exactly. That's true, yeah, but yeah. my my problem is I don't feel like Bioware is good at writing stories no more. Because even since Mass Effect, well, 3, like they've gone through like a million different writing teams. In defense, though, uh, or mm-hmm. in in Bioware's defense, though, Mass Effect Andromeda was their B team. Yeah, Anthem yeah, would be their A team, and yeah. Dragon Age Inquisition, which was also their A team, was not bad. So yeah. exactly, yeah. and their previous A team that worked on uh, Mass Effect Three is a complete oh god, like right. you know. So, so like I was I was it. about to be like, hey, uh, why'd they give the Mass Effect to these guys? Oh, I'm glad that they gave Mass Effect to the B guys, except and not like to these guys who fucked up Mass Effect 3. Oh, they were all fired a long time ago? Okay. Whenever they people talk about A team and B team, it's it's like really funny because I always think yeah, of Dark can... Souls because that was oh, okay. Because mm-hmm. that was when that was when I uh that that was when I first started hearing the terms A team and B team because Dark Souls 2 was given to From Software's B team. And everybody hated it, and they gave the B team a ton of flack. And Dark Souls Two is like my favorite entry. I'm the only one. I think I'm the only one. I'm the only Apple one who like Dark Souls, Souls Two. No, I think really? I think a lot of people. Yeah. I think well, a lot of people will say that Dark Souls is their favorite because of it, the way that it did their atmospheric storytelling. More so, like no. that game was more good at that. No, 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 no. I'm talking about. Ones. Within the within the Soulsborne series, oh, Dark oh, in Souls terms of two yeah. is my favorite game out of the the series, and Dark Souls two is the one that got the most flack because it was made by the B team, 
instead of the instead of the like Dark Souls one and three had just had a lot more going on is what people were well, saying. Is that because and, uh, Bloodborne was the A team? I think I think that's because Blood, why. Bloodborne tends to be a lot of people's favorite uh, of all of them. Um, and that really just depends on whether or not you played it, I guess. But yeah, for a lot I, of people, that's Bloodborne. that's people's favorite. So, though. yeah, that makes sense too. Um, but yeah, but yeah, like A team and B team. That's that's just a thing. Like when when studios get so big that they're working on multiple games at a time, it's like you put your best people on the A team and you put your not as good people on the B team, and that's kind of just kind of how it works. Uh, yeah. so. Do you want to move on now, or do you have anything else to say? No, I don't have anything else to say, but I am excited about this news news story because uh, uh I'm skipping one because what this makes no! this makes more sense. Okay. I'm going back to that. Okay, <laughs> this makes more sense to follow what we were talking about. But Fair um, enough. Ubisoft is doing a couple of things with Rainbow Six Siege, <laughs> and they're notably not doing a couple of things with Rainbow Six Siege. So, and actually, this was for Ghost Recon Wildlands as well. We just didn't mention it because I don't think any of us here really cares about that game. But they're adding cosmetic loot boxes to both of those mm -hmm. games. Uh, so Rainbow Six Siege is going to have a bunch of uh, loot boxes that they add that are purchasable that they are very, like, in their press release, is very clear to say um, only cosmetic items, not tied to progression whatsoever. And... Well, see uh, and also that they are non-duplicates. So if you buy them separately, you can get them like that. And I think you can also buy specific things directly through the store. Well. You, you already can buy specific cosmetics directly. See, yeah. I like I like being able... See, that that's one of the things that I like about, loot bo about cosmetic loot boxes, is if you can buy specific things, it's like, oh, how do I pick between these? This this one looks really cool, but that one also looks really cool, and it's easier to just buy a loot box for cheaper. Yeah, and I then think... it's like, wow, I got this really cool skin, and then that feels really nice. Yeah, I think like, it's tied to progression. It's terrible, right? So I I do wrong. agree that I I kind of don't mind the loot box as an aspect if you can directly purchase. This is the one of the things that kills me about Overwatch is I feel like there are a lot of skins I would just buy with money. Mm -hmm. But yeah. because they're tied to loot boxes, like I, it is not worth it to me to buy loot boxes at all. Right. Um, because I feel like I never get anything good out of them. So I like I don't trust buying loot boxes from Overwatch. I just don't. Um, exactly. That, that might be different for other people, but for me, I will probably never buy loot boxes on Overwatch yeah, because I never going, get anything out of them. If you're going for a specific skin, then you. The most I can do is just play a lot and hope for the best. Like that's all I yeah, can really get yeah. out of boxes from overwatch um, it, it's funny because in china i know that in china because of their loot box rules changed you buy their the in-game currency and get loot boxes for free as a bonus i would so much more prefer that because then i could at least just buy enough currency to buy the thing i want yeah but yeah. you know what were you gonna say um I know that your experience is significantly different, and don't get me wrong, I probably would never spend real money on Overwatch loot boxes, but but I feel that I get at least a decent amount of coins out of loot boxes. Like, not every time, maybe one in five loot boxes give me some coins. I just straight up don't. And then after, after like, over time, those those coins will build up to buy the specific skins you want, which I kind of like, but... I, I kind of agree with what you're saying. It would be nice to just be able to buy particular skins with, with real money. Yeah, I've like, been sitting on 1,500 coins forever. Like, mm -hmm. for almost a year. And I just, it it goes up a little bit, and then I'll, like, buy something for 200, and then it, it's just been hovering around 1,500 forever. And, yeah. like, I have not had enough saved up to buy any of the new skins when they come out, like the 3,000 level skins that are temporary. I just never have enough to buy them. Yeah. So it's just really, it's really frustrating to me. Uh, the other thing that Ubisoft was going to do is raise the base price of the mid-tier game from the standard edition, which was $40, up to $60 for the advanced edition. So right. they were they were raising the base price of the game, but there was such a large backlash that Ubisoft decided to reverse that decision, and now they're not going to increase the base price of the game. Okay. Right. 
Well, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, I, I sort of didn't care, of but six siege with some friends from work. It, it wasn't very recent, so I didn't feel it was necessary to talk about it on the podcast. Right. I when I when I quit that, quit playing it with you guys, and subsequently you guys quit because I wasn't playing it. Um. I, I don't even think it's that for me. I just haven't... Like, there's so many games that I play that it's just not something that's... Fair enough. Yeah. Um, I just... I was really feeling bummed out on it because it felt like the game had just turned closer and closer to just a regular Call of Duty. Like, like those... It, like, the attacker and defender mechanic is really cool. I love that. But when people just run outside the map borders, like, it's like... Here they are. There, there you go. You can see them, and it's like, oh, you can see them. You, you can shoot them now. But it's at that point, it's just like playing Call of Duty. They're just gonna like, you can see them, but they ran outside the map border, so you're in open territory. They can see where you are, and it just comes down to who's who's a better shot. And it's like, why don't I just play COD or Counter Strike? Counter Strike is is closer. I guess I see what you're saying, but I disagree. Um, I, d I don't feel that way at all, but I, I guess I can see how you feel that way. I don't know. Well, at the time that I quit, it happened to me like every match. When I played a couple games with my friends from work, I was having fun for a little while. And it was like 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 those those regular attack and defend games. But na but but then after a while, it became a bunch of people just running out of their spawn room. And it's like. We actually won every match because somebody would pop out of the spawn room. It would be ten seconds in. They they or they they'd pop outside of the building. They'd get scanned. I would be like, oh, there they are, and then they would shoot me, and I would die ten seconds into the match. And then because they were running around hunting, uh, my teammates would win the game. And it was it was like legitimately every single game. I died in ten seconds, and my teammates would win without dying because they were running around outside trying to kill them. Um, and and I hated it because Brezo, I didn't get to play. Brazo from chat is is essentially agreeing with you that it feels less tactical, and now it, so it has kind of changed from his opinion too. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I haven't played it lately, so you know I I don't really know. But yeah, same, either way, I have no opinion. But I, that that is sort of actually how I felt a little bit out of it when I played Dead first. I feel like, like that's kind of the natural progression of a lot of shooters like that, anyway. Yeah. yeah. Like, but like people want to play it tactically, yeah. but eventually you just get to the point where you're playing so many games that it like, almost I, doesn't make sense I, to. I, I can't think of another game where you're able to be killed inside of your spawn room. Like, I I just can't think of one. Uh. It, it, well, I mean, I mean, th there's no spawn I mean, room in that game, though. Barring... <laughs> right, but but if you if you if you talk about like like if you consider the spawn room, like there are, there are boundaries that the defenders are not meant to go out of. I think there are certain maps that are worse than others for that. Uh, yeah. I I don't think that's a consistent problem uh, across most maps, but there's mm -hmm. definitely at least one map where it's really bad, which is that like uh. It's like a rooftop map. Yeah. Uh, and and yeah, I agree with you, but I think it's just that map. Like I think that map is bad. There they I so. there's a new map that they added that's like this 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 traditional Japanese temple too. That one's pretty bad about it. That that's the one that I I was like, "Okay, fuck it, guys. I'm done. You guys go ahead and keep playing." Um I don't know. All my friends say they get pissy at it too, but I'm pretty bad about it. Yeah. Uh Anyway, like I think we've spent enough yeah. time on this. Yeah. Yeah. So let's move to that uh the new story Dawson wanted to talk about, which oh, is Oh no. Here we go. John Cena is in talks to be in a Duke Nukem movie. Okay. Let me explain something. Last week I saw this in the movie news and I actively skipped over it. I don't okay. have anything to do with this bullshit because it looks terrible. I don't give a shit. How terrible it looks. Because Duke Nukem... If has been shit for 20 years! Oh, and, and actually, I should probably gameplay. add, this is being produced by Michael Bay. By Michael Bay. Okay. Let's, let's also, I don't think this story is a week old, though. You probably... you might Maybe you saw it on Monday, maybe? Last week? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, I think I did. And but this has been the talk all stuff, week yeah. uh, of, of various gaming things, so I think this is... I just, I just want you to think. Okay, this is a movie. Mm -hmm. It's a video game movie. Mm -hmm. 
about Duke Nukem. Which, which last time Duke Nukem was in anything, it was a record-breaking fucking failure. But, mm. listen. Listen mm. to my point here. Okay, go on. Think about Duke Nukem. Yes. Think about Duke Nukem, the things that you like about Duke Nukem. Like, you're you're running Nothing. around, you're blowing, sh- shut up, you're blowing the fuck out of aliens, you're, you're killing them, you're flipping them off, you're saying crude things, and you're like, I'm Duke Nukem. It's time to kick ass and chew bubble gum. Yes. And, and that's like that's like the old ass Duke Nukem shit. I'd rather There's just ex- watch They Live. Or uh, sure. play Doom. Sure. Uh, or play Doom. Or play sure. Doom while They yeah. Live is playing in a Staying window. In the background. Then yeah. it's exact same not, experience. Or, or any better. other but John Carpenter not... movie. Or Evil Dead. Well, but I say they live in particular Dead. because all of those yeah. lines are but, from They Live. But. Uh, but, most but of his I'm lines trying... are actually from Evil Dead, but... Uh, well, They Live the and Evil Dead. Yeah, yeah, there yeah, are yeah. a but lot I'm from trying... They Live. What, yeah, what, yeah, I'm, yeah, sure. what I'm trying to explain is that mm. the reason that Duke Nukem was a hit mm. in the past, there were aliens, you were fighting them, there were explosions... You were this buff dude. You had to shoot the aliens, and that's all it was. It was good, and nice, old fun. It was now, a parody of old eighties. It was of a parody of, of old eighties movies. Yeah. Now, I have no doubts that Michael Bay is tra- going to try and make this some crazy, serious action movie ass bullshit. I, I don't necessarily think. Uh, yeah, I don't necessarily think that either. But, but, but if you if you think about Duke Nukem, first off, John Cena is a great great choice for him. Because he's a buff dude with no personality. <laughs> um, and, I'm gonna disagree a little bit, but we can talk about that. And Michael Bay is is a great choice for Duke Nukem. Because what's Duke Nukem about? Shoot aliens and shit explodes. That's what it's about. That's all there is. So, so, so when you combine those those things together, I think that Michael Bay with John Cena as a lead would make a good Duke Nukem movie, not okay, a good okay. movie. So let, oh. let me let me start. I okay, think ahead. that. There is some potential for Duke Nukem, but, and this is a big but, <coughs> it would have to be very heavily a parody. Like, there's no other way you could do Duke Nukem. You would have to have Duke Nukem as a super parody being, like, a total asshole and everybody hates him. Like, that's the only way you yeah. could get away with it. And that's why I think John Cena is a bad choice, because I think people like John Cena too much. Yeah. I do. That's true. Do people? Do I like think John like Cena. someone like Ron Perlman might be better. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Okay. Ron Perlman as Duke Nukem, right? But, but I love Ron Perlman. Yeah, but he's kind the... of an asshole. <laughs> here, 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 How about here, Sylvester here... Stallone? I I could see that too. Ah, there we go. Perfect. <laughs> Sylvester Stallone as Duke Nukem, and you know what? Maybe don't we don't go with like the parody of Duke Nukem and Duke Nukem's an asshole. Maybe we go with you just played it straight. But then Michael Bay wouldn't be able to do it. If you gave this movie to Quentin Tarantino, he'd fucking make something of it. But that I don't I think don't, I don't think he would do it. I don't think Quentin Tarantino. I don't think he would do it. I, I, I Michael Bay definitely would. would yeah, I don't. Yeah, that, think... No, no, that, that's the thing. I don't think Quentin Tarantino would, but he's the only one who could. I don't know. I think I think there is a very small potential of a even with John Cena. I think there's a small potential to like make it work. Yeah. But you would ha- it would have to be very self self reflect like self yeah, self reflective, self aware. Yeah, it and would have to is... be like this is a like it would have to be like this is a garbage hu- human being and everybody needs to recognize how much of a garbage human being this character yeah. is. That's the only way you get away with it. Yeah. And, that, and that's like while it was playing the first Duke Nukem. Uh, du- sorry, not the first Duke Nukem. I mean Duke Nukem Forever. Uh, mm-hmm. What I was thinking is like, you know, you know, it'd be nice if Duke Nukem was like some schlubby fucking drunk who would actually save the world, but everyone hates him because he's a fucking asshole. But that's kind of what Duke Nukem is. He's not no. schlubby. He's, he was he's... never any of that. Well, he's certain. I'm pretty sure he's a drunk. Also, I think I think John Duke Cena... Nukem was one of the first video games where you could drink alcohol in a first person shooter. I also think Duke Nukem is supposed to be like older and like more world weary yeah. looking, at least. Ew. And I think Ew. John Cena is too like I don't know young and and yeah. he, actually he's like kind handsome. of old, but he does look he doesn't look it. <laughs> uh, well, what is he like forty? 
I think he's like 50 something. He's that old. I would suggest Dave Bustia, but he's going on to much more impressive and professional things. Like, he was in the new fucking Blade Runner movie, so. Uh, I, I want Dave Bustia to do good, so I want him to stay away from Oh, the... no, yeah, he's 40, huh? Okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. I mean, he he still looks young for 40, let's be real. Yeah, but... yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's definitely. I don't. I don't speak Spanish, Kawaii Krill. Uh, yeah, so the last gaming story we have here is um, Sony has patented a new uh, motion controller, which makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. I, I mean, I. Do we have to say anything about this? People don't really like the old move controllers. So having a new yeah. redesigned motion controller for their VR makes sense. Yeah. So. Agreed. So good. Yeah. Good work, guys. Good. You, you it would be to nice. You did. It would be nice if they were able to create parity <clears throat> with the uh, Oculus Rift and the X or HTC Vive because then they could have some cross-platform stuff going on. But I don't yeah, know yeah, how interested sure. uh, PlayStation is with that. So who knows? Yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah, I don't know. It's like it's like you had to do the dishes, so you did the dishes. Good work. Yeah, this is something that they've needed to do for a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Their 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 motion controllers were kind of garbage. Okay, so I think that's it for gaming, gaming news. news. Should we take a break before we get into movies? How much, there's, there's how much movie news is there? Uh, there's a good bit, but I might be able to go through it kind of quickly. Uh, do you think it'll take less than? Because if it if it takes less than like half an hour, maybe we should just go through. Unless you guys yeah, really need it. a bathroom it might, break. It might, it, might, it, might, it might take less than half an hour. How how are you feeling, Dawson? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Forget forget a break. We don't need it. Yeah, I don't need it. no okay. breaks. Uh, first things first. Uh, last week we talked about how Sundance had hum, and it is finally gone. So we actually have some stuff to talk about. Uh, cool. the biggest, uh, winners were, was, first off, The, uh, Miseducation of Cameron, po Cameron Post, which is a movie about, uh, uh, the uh, homosexual reassignment therapy, and a movie called, Ugh. yeah, uh-huh, it's a, a, an incredibly uplifting film <laughs> about... <laughs> a beautiful tale about nothing but great things that makes I, you I, feel I good really inside. Wanted, a really, a really oh, yeah, nice, yeah. a nice yeah. little movie about, about people just enjoying life. Young kids getting, uh, and a movie called Kailash, which I actually haven't heard anything about. Um, also, uh, special mentions have been made to the new film that Nick Cage has been in. It was called Mandy, which everyone has been. Needless to say, Nicholas Cage you know, was in a good movie. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> um, Nicholas Cage is in a good movie. What's it called, Mandy? Uh, Mandy, yes. I might actually put that on my list because that actually yeah, sounds funny. I, lo I, I love Nicolas Cage in a completely like ironic way. I love watching him be fucking terrible. It's 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 so good. Back he's not good. awful in everything, but it's still f yeah. he's he's a funny looking guy. Yeah. I don't know, just like, his speech pattern. Like he's just entertaining to watch, even, like yeah. regardless he's of what's like, going on. So, so, so this is something only you guys might have context on. But back when I still hung out with Jeff, I always asked him for advice on my Dungeons and Dragons campaigns that I was running for you guys, and he, his, his, his advice to me was always add an NPC that was a character from a Nicolas Cage movie, and it would be the same NPC every time, but he was playing a different Nicolas Cage role. And I was like, I don't think that's a good idea. But he I thought it was hilarious, idea. and he was kind of right because Nicolas Cage is always in such bad movies that he's hilarious. So <laughs> is that Tucker? Cage. Is that the Tucker of our games? Um, no, I never did it. But he yeah. was like talking, like just doing like National Treasure or something. You could like, see how Tucker is much. almost yeah. like often enough. Yeah, but... yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Nicolas Cage. Um, Nicolas Cage is like the uh, he's like Christopher Walken, but in bad movies. I have no idea what you're talking about. So Christopher Walken is like a really you know weird Christopher guy Walken who has is, a right? really weird yes. um, speech pattern and really weird way of acting. But instead of being in bad movies like Nicolas Cage is, Christopher Walken's like almost always in good movies. Yeah, Christopher Walken's almost consistently in good movies except for Click. 
and uh in anything with adam sandler actually because <laughs> he's been in a lot he was in the cobbler which was apparently really bad like exceptionally terrible you no know, click wasn't the worst movie on the planet but it wasn't yeah uh, it was one of uh, it was one of uh what if modern adam sandler's you had best, a gun Fine. <laughs> that's the best <laughs> thing that came out of click let's be honest duck game <laughs> duck game duck uh, game okay moving uh, on is there anything else from the sundance uh sundance here's the thing with sundance um a lot of the stuff that's going to be coming out is going to eventually probably get wide releases and we'll mm -hmm. see how good they are then that's when we'll talk about some of this stuff like there's still yeah. like stuff from like last year's sundance uh but nothing super notable because I, I remember like a couple ones i remember when moonlight first showed yeah. up at sundance and people were talking about it a lot so it doesn't sound yeah. like there's anything that people are talking about a lot coming out of the sundance uh, a little bit. I, I honestly, Mary is the one that a lot of people are talking about, mostly because of the fact that Nicolas Cage is in a good movie. Or not Mary, fucking Man Mandy? Mandy. Yeah. Is it Mandy, Mandy or Mindy? It's, it's Mandy. Okay. Mandy. It's got an A in it. Okay. Okay. Um, the Grim Adventures of Billy. All right. Mandy. Yeah. Uh. So the next one. It's the same. Character. Uh. Now that fucking Disney has bought Fox, Indiana Jones Five. Are you ready to see fucking uh, Harrison Ford get closer and closer to hating his own life and everything? <laughs> I can't he's wait. Done? I can't wait for Fallout Five to have another Indiana Jones reference in it. That'll be really fun, won't it? Uh, hey, that was funny in Fallout New Vegas. Fuck you. Okay, yeah, but great. it was. But it wasn't <laughs> funny when they did it in Fallout Four. Did they do it in Fallout 4? Yeah, it was the same was thing. There was a ghoul that crawled out of a fridge and attacked you. And that, I don't think that fucker. was... Was that a fucking reference to the Indiana Jones thing? Yeah, because yeah, in Crystal Skull, he hides out of a fridge. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. And that was the, definitely the reference in fucking... Because, like, you uh, you found the fridge and there was, like, a skeleton in it with Indiana Jones's hat. Okay, uh -huh. but if you take <laughs> if you take Crystal Skull out of the Indiana Jones series, then... That is almost a nothing but good series, so yeah. fair. Yeah. Right, so I could see a five being good. I just am surprised that Yeah. <laughs> uh how do you how do you offer a man like Harrison Ford and that much money that he'd be willing to go back to Indiana Jones? I don't know. Do you think man. it do you think it's gonna be like the same kind of probably the same way that they offered him enough money for Star Wars? Yeah. Well and Blade. But Runner. that but that Makes more sense or no, because wait, did at he least here in the next Blade. Yeah, he yeah, was. He did. Yeah, Blade he Runner. Blade to, Runner right? makes a little bit more sense to me, but because that's a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. There's more. There's more to that. With with Star yeah. Wars, he wasn't a major character. Like he was, he but was he wasn't in it a lot. Him. I guess he was pretty pretty major in Blade. Yeah, Runner he was a very Star major character, but he wasn't the star hero right. character. He was yeah. there, but he wasn't like in every scene so whereas indiana jones like unless it was the same way that crystal skull tried to like pass the torch i don't see how yeah i don't see how like <laughs> i don't see how harrison ford sits down and looks at it and be like okay fine that's 15 billion dollars fine i i don't know okay, like i'll do it this time he was he was goddamn great in Blade Runner. Was. I was happy to see he him was. in Blade Runner. He was, that I, was his I, best I, role since. I want to ask a que old. I want to ask a question here from Drazo yes. in our chat. Uh, do you guys think that Harrison Ford will finally be squashed by the boulder? Leave your answer in the comments <laughs> below. <laughs> uh, you know, honestly, that is a, a plot that has been going on for a long time in the Indiana Jones series. It's like oh, it's always right behind him in some of the shots, and I really think if they can like follow through on this one and really bring a closure to this plot line uh I, i'm hoping for a boulder sort of like a tearful reunition where the boulder has like indiana jones in his clutches but then he, he has this moral quandary where i've been i've been asking for revenge for so long and now i finally have you in my clutches i don't know if i i, I all hope this time have we truly become friends <laughs> Lovers, even that night in Paraguay. <laughs> I mind the entire time. Uh, okay. Anyway, so yeah, Indiana Jones, a uh, love, uh, love of rock, is set to release sometime. So yeah, <laughs> what's next? Uh, Sam Raimi is going to be directing the King Killer Chronicles. I don't know what the fuck the King Killer Chronicles are on. I've never heard of them either. Uh, they are a series of fantasy books uh apparently pretty popular 
Um, and Sam Raimi is going to be directing them. Unfortunately, I don't have that much to say about this, just because, I mean, I like here's, Sam Raimi, but I don't know Here's what about I have to say about it. Oh. I assume it's a fantasy book series, right? Yes, yes. So, yeah. Sam Raimi, I trust Sam Raimi to adapt something better than... Remember Most. when Aragon came out? That was <laughs> such a horrible adaptation of an of a fantasy book. Like, I, I still think about how bad that movie is. <laughs> it still haunts your fucking yeah. dreams. And as much issue as I had with um the sp early Spider-Man movies, mm -hmm. like, the directing and stuff, that was the good part. So, yeah. It, yeah. like, I just had an issue with some of the casting and some of the writing. But, like, yeah. a, everything that Sam Raimi did in, in regards to Spider-Man was good. So... Yeah, say, yeah. This might, might be fucking great. And hey, if we get uh, another good fantasy movie, we you, you remember? Oh, it wasn't. Was it? Was, yeah, it was, we need it was, something it was, other than just more of Lord of Nicholas, the Rings, right? Yes. Yeah, speaking of Nicolas Cage, there was a movie that came out that basically killed that huge uh, like fantasy boom after Lord of the Rings. Uh, it was like The Witcher or something, or like The Witch Hunter. It wasn't The oh, Witcher, like based on yeah, The Witcher books. Uh, it was like the, I, I actually oh. saw that movie. I saw that movie in theaters. It was fucking awful. It was so <laughs> bad. Oh, I thought it was. Oh, okay. that was a bad movie. Uh, it wasn't okay. Like go see it, but it was okay. Like I see a movie every week. I'm tolerant yeah. of this. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So yeah, if this is a good movie and it uh, makes a good fantasy movie, I mean, it's not like Sam Raimi hasn't directed a good fantasy movie before. Army of Darkness is fucking. I feel incredible. like everything Sam Raimi does is just good. So like, I yeah. don't. So, yeah. I, I don't yeah. I can't think of bad things he's done, so Yeah. Uh, it's funny so, yeah. because I, I, I just recently was going Hey, what's Sam Raimi been up to lately? Oh what's that man Sorry. Been doing? Oh, okay, good. Oh, I was yeah. like, okay, ready to switch my overlay, but you, you came here. back just I'm in time. I'm still here. That was just a mistake. I hit a I hit a hotkey. <laughs> okay. And Well anyway, I think that's about all we can say about that because we don't like know anything. Yeah, it. yeah. Let's all move right, on. So the next sto story is Tom Hanks is going to play Mr. Rogers in a biopic, which is great. Uh, I love everything about this idea. Is it? Uh, I, 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 basically, the uh, most I have to bring up is the Onion wrote a joke article about this, saying uh, Tom, Hex, Tom Hanks vows that he will not rest until he's betrayed every single American. Portrayed. Portrayed, it sounded, yeah. it sounded like you said betrayed. You said betrayed. Betrayed. Yeah. betrayed. <laughs> Yeah, then I was Tom like, Tom Hanks will not rest, will not rest he until he's betrayed every, every single man. So in this context, I was just picturing Tom Hanks dressed as Mr. Rogers, just murdering everyone. <laughs> <laughs> he's just like, he's just like dressed as Mr. Rogers, just kicking the shit out of his little town. Oh, like I just, I just <laughs> imagined he has, he, I just imagined like, oh, because we were talking about Lord of the Rings, he's wearing like this fucking black coat, just sit, just standing at like the, the fucking... The, the fucking uh, Tom mouth Hanks of Mordor, to play like Mr. Rogers in the Ultimate Showdown cinematic universe, <laughs> the everything cinematic, the movies cinematic universe. <laughs> oh, this next just, story. Just Tom, oh, just Tom Hanks. Uh, yeah, well, we'll get to that in a second. But yeah, uh, Tom Tom Hanks just sitting uh, at the mouth of Mordor, fucking like like Steven Spielberg. Tom Hanks, destroy it. No. He walks away with the one ring of. He walks away with the fucking Oscar again. Um, so yeah, the next has story. Tom Hanks, has Tom Hanks even won an Oscar? I know that there's like a bunch of actors that have consistently I'm not. That he has. I think it was for Forrest Gump. Okay. Yeah. So actually, decently early in his career, then relatively. Yeah, speaking. yeah. Tom, Tom. I'm pretty sure he's won like a couple. Tom Hanks is one of those big award winner men, and it's like so far as you hear. Tom Hanks is, like, one of the nicest fucking guys who's just a goddamn great person in Hollywood. And I, that's why I'm kind of happy to see him. One of the Rogers. few people not to be dragged into a sex scandal. Unlike... Until anyway, next... wow. unlike Woody Allen, who, oh, oh, to oh, almost yeah, no one's surprised, has gotten caught up in this whole sex scandal thing. Uh, one of the things that Woody Allen has gotten a lot of flack over. Um, tons of it. A lot of having to do with his um, adopted daughter, who he is currently married. The thing that that really kills me about this article you linked is yeah. that Alex Baldwin was defending him. <laughs> yeah, a drunk Alec Baldwin defends Woody uh, Allen. Uh, and he's, like, the only person who's doing it. And, and yeah, it's, it's so weird. I'm, I'm sorry. Like, yeah. I just, I want to throw something out here. I just got yeah. this, like, really weird. I, 
it's it's an emotion that I don't even understand how to describe. Mm-hmm. But 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 you'll have to just follow my train of logic, which might be I want really to speak hard out. here. We were just talking Oops. about Tom Hanks, right? Yes. Yeah. And and we moved on from Tom Hanks. We we and and we used a segue. We would talk. Tom Hanks was blah 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 blah. Unlike Woody Allen, now. Tom Hanks played a character in a very popular movie, and his name was Woody. And so those lines just kind of really blurred there for a moment in that segue. I was like, you were I was like, Space Station 13 yeah. flashbacks to was, Woody got wood. I was like, I was like, so, so t- wait, so wait, Tom Hanks is a good person, but Woody the toy is not. <laughs> I hang on, I don't understand. Those are the same that was the same actor. <laughs> and like I said, I don't really know how to describe what I was feeling until it kind of wheeled around in my head and I was like, wait, those are different people. <laughs> Tom Hanks, uh Tom Hanks <laughs> vows to betray every single American, including uh Buzz Lightyear. Oh god. Anyway, uh anyway, back to the fucking horrors of real life. Uh, you Woody were saying Allen, about his his daughter. Yeah, his his legacy has been Woody Allen has been a very controversial figure in Hollywood for a very long time, and the person who outed him was actually his daughter, not the one that he married, but one of the daughters that he had with the actress that he was married to before he married her. Um, I'm sorry if this gets confusing, but believe you me, it is. Uh, it's the whole thing is a goddamn mess continuously a goddamn mess but this i mean out of all of the hollywood actors who people are surprised did some bad shit this one is one of the least surprising just because it's this is the one that everyone expected and the fact that it came up now it's like oh yeah i'm surprised this hasn't come up yet yeah yeah no and that's the thing like like i thought when when the thing was talked about with harvey weinstein i was you know we were talking about it's like yeah yeah everyone fucking knew harvey weinstein was an asshole and this was a you know giant joke like he was the rapist and this has been people have been fucking talking about this in Hollywood for years. It's been more like that with Woody Allen because he's done fucking crazier bullshit. And yeah, the fact that this came out is a surprise to basically no one except for Alec Baldwin, apparently. And yeah. you know, there there have been a lot of people who have been talking about. It. I think Alec Baldwin said something like, uh, "It's like, oh, this is horrible. I, and now now anyone can be removed from the Academy for just uh, releasing a letter. It's like it's terrible. I can't believe that people are doing this." I kind of like, get what he's saying, but this is not but, the person like, to argue about. Not, no, don't not not for Woody Allen, my man. Not for Woody Allen. Uh, I remember, like you know, uh, before even the Harvey Weinstein thing happened, I saw on Letterboxd there was a uh, because because of Woody Allen so vilified, there was just a list of movies you have to watch that are basically the Woody Allen movies, so you don't have to watch fucking Woody Allen movies. Oh. Uh, yeah. do we want to talk about this Russia thing? I kind of don't care about that story, but... Um, I actually want to talk about this a little bit just so I can talk about, uh, The Death of Stalin. Okay. So, The Death of Stalin is a movie, uh, I'm a huge fan of In Bruges. I'm not, no, wait, wrong movie. Is it two L's or one L? Uh, The Death of One, one, L. one L, okay. Yeah, the Death one of L. One L. <laughs> the Death of Death one of Woody L. Allen. There's the two Death L's of Woody L. Allen, L. um... Uh, it, uh, excuse me, The Death of Stalin is not a, is, has nothing to do with In Bruges. It has to do with a movie called In the Loop, which is a, uh, political comedy movie that sort of gave, uh, angry Scottish Doctor Who man his fucking, uh, career, whose, uh, name I can't remember off the top of my head, who played an angry Scottish politician, and the, the entire movie was goddamn hilarious. And this is another movie by the same directors with the same sort of idea um about the death of stalin and uh it was banned in russia oh to anyone surprised to anyone surprised that, remember that's when not that uh, fucking garbage uh that fucking garbage movie was banned in fucking uh north korea yeah and and it almost got abandoned oh, in yeah, the united one states made... because it got really political well it didn't it didn't get a uh... Theater release in the United States because of it, yeah. but it was really yeah. it was like straight to Blu-ray. Yeah, and it was released directly on Netflix, and it got super popular and got a ton of money because of the censorship. Uh 
In the Loop wasn't wasn't a very hurt, heard of movie, mostly because it was like purely just a British movie. Um, so I'm hoping the censorship gives the death of Stalin a little bit more, uh, you know, a little bit more, a little bit more of. Of course, I think the censorship is bad, and you shouldn't censorship stuff stuff ever. That's my stance on censorship. It's fuck that. Um, but in a weird but, way, when you only censored in one one place in particular, if, if it helps place, sometimes. Yeah, if one place censors it, and a lot of people watch it because it's censored, it has the Barbara Streisand effect. Uh, yeah. It's great. Remember, like when uh, Goosebumps was censored in schools, and kids like loved the Goosebumps even more for that. That never happened. No. For me. I never yeah, I'd never of heard that. of that either. That's crazy. Really? Uh, Goose, a lot of schools had, uh, well, they didn't censor it. They just basically outright, like, banned them. Uh, there and... are there are books that I remember being banned. Not at my school, but I remember some books being not allowed. But I remember, yeah, I remember in high uh, school reading, like, a like actual, like, book with porn in it, so. Yeah. Uh, one of the things, like, I remember uh, as well, like, I don't think any of the school books were banned in my school either, which is kind of weird because my school was in, like, a small town. In Oregon, yeah, but um, I remember, like, reading, like, 1984 was banned, and seeing as I was an incredibly edgy high schooler, I just started reading 1984 at school. Hold because, up! Fuck you. Uh, yeah? 1984 being banned has to be, like, the most <laughs> ironic shit in the Yeah, and it was world. constantly well, banned. That yeah, that there's... book is banned in a lot of places. It's stupid. Yeah, well, here's the thing. It's that not banned the for that reason, reason believe only... it or not. It's banned because the of the only... sexual content in it. I think the only book that I can imagine being more ironically being banned would be Fahrenheit 451. <laughs> which which is banned in some places. Yeah, 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 which what is, the in fuck? fact, banned, yes. This is uh, the whole point. <laughs> Also, it's hilarious. Uh, what, what, yeah, I know. <laughs> what, what, what was the other book? Uh, to Kill a Mockingbird. To Kill a Mockingbird. That one I actually was definitely not banned to because Kill that was a Mockingbird was required reading for yeah, like, same. No, it, yeah, but it was also stuff. banned in some places. Banned in a lot of because places. Of rape, yeah. uh, There's uh, also a uh, Huckleberry Finn, I think. Right? Yeah. Huckleberry huh? Finn oh, was that's also a racism banned. thing. That makes uh, sense. Uh, what? Oh, jeez. Uh, not To Kill a Mockingbird. The J.D. Salinger book. Fuck. Uh, I remember oh, the guy uh, the yeah, um, Catcher in the Rye. Catcher in the yeah, Rye was right. banned. Which yeah. is funny really? because that's another book that some places is like required reading, other places is banned. It's, it's well, yeah, and it's funny. funny the Catcher in the Rye is banned because it's about like this edgy college student and most of the like I read Catcher in the Rye again as a high school student because I was being edgy. I was like, you know, yeah. Wasn't like, there like, another really Twain good. book that was banned? Not not Huckleberry Finn, but oh, it was probably the one I had. I um I, I not I, I had Sawyer. Mark Twain. Should just be banned from existence. We know you hate Mark Twain. We know you hate Mark Twain. Hate. Uh, Are we ready to move on? I, hold on. I feel like the reason I don't even know what like we're Mark... talking about anymore. Banned we're books. We're talking about <laughs> banned books. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, we're pretty much ready to move on. I just wanted to talk about <laughs> the death of Solon, and I'm really excited to see it. So, all right. Next thing is, and this is the big one: uh, Oscar nominations. So we're just Oscars. We're not going to go through every one, but we will talk about some notable yeah. ones. Uh, so the bull in in the bullshit uh fucking awards garbage garbage awards. Uh, Call Me by Your Name and Lady Bird, of course, are up for Best Picture. Of like, like but that that's what I was expecting. Like, oh, my Oscar predictions. Oh, Call Me by Your Name and Lady Bird, because everyone fucking loves them. Of I'm course, not they're gonna be best. surprised by any of these Best Picture yeah, nominations. I'm, I'm not, except none of these surprises. Except me. I've yeah, never but... heard of Phantom Thread. That's the only one that I. Oh, 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 oh. Phantom Thread is a uh is the new Paul Thomas Anderson movie. Uh, I he's don't most. Know. Re- uh, yeah. there will be blood. Oh, uh, okay. The master, and uh, oh, the, is it a horror yeah. movie? Phantom Thread? No, no. There will be blood. Wasn't a horror movie either. Eh? I don't think he has directed a horror movie. Oh, maybe I'm thinking of a different movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, it yeah. Was, it was the movie about Thomas Plainview, the 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 oil rig man. Oh, who, uh, yeah. <clears throat> okay. There will be blood. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Uh, Phantom Thread is his new movie, and what a lot of people are saying is is his best movie, and He's a lot of people's favorite director, like out of all of them. So he's so is, is he this, like this, Oscar bait or is he like actually a good director? <laughs> Does that make um, sense? Um, he's like a very good director. Okay, uh, I'll, like, I'll check that out. Yeah, he's making he makes um art films, but on the big screen. If you know what I mean. So uh, something cool is Get Out got a Best Picture nomination, which is super yes, cool. I actually wasn't expecting that. That's one of the. F- really I, cool. I kind of was, but like it was surprising. I, to me, it was more surprising not to see it at the Golden Globes. 
Yeah. But to see it at at the Oscars is kind of like that's a reversal. I I don't so so we're all in agreement that the Oscars are really really petty, right? Oh yeah. No, nobody's yeah. gonna argue with me with that. No, not. I at feel all. like now. Don't get me wrong. I think Get Out is oh, a really good movie. Do you think it's and, just because of the social comment, like the yes, social commentary? Yeah. That's what okay. I was gonna say. Yeah. And Jordan maybe. Peele is a really good director. It's a really good movie. See, and maybe the, maybe the that's commentary where... is very subtle because he's really good I, at doing that. Yeah. It's, I don't it's, know. It's not really. It's, it, it's, it's not, not subtle. Like, oh, it's not it's subtle. Not your, it out. It's not in your yeah. face. It's not like it's, yeah. Like it's not in your rain. face. Well, well here, here's the thing. It's not dumb. Right. right. It's not dumb. I guess. I guess. I guess I count it as not subtle because it's not in your face. Or I guess I count it. it yeah. It's, it's not, not it's subtle, but it's not. He wants to string it, up the black. Yeah. Man. It's not subtle, it's not but it's not ham fisted. It is a major plot point in the film, so you can't say it's subtle, but it's not ham fisted either. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like fucking bright. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So 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 I guess it's not subtle, but. But it like I feel like the reason that it got nominated in the Oscars is because of the social commentary, and not Maybe. because of its technical. Maybe. But all or, of these movies writing. that I'm seeing, like I act of of the ones that I've seen in the Best Picture awards, is probably my favorite one here. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, it is a very good movie, regardless. So. Yeah. Uh, Shape of Water also got a Best Picture nomination. That's a little surprising, yeah. almost. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm happy about that though. No, I yeah, mean, I, I, I liked it. Yeah, but I'm I'm happy that uh, Del Toro is getting some uh, some good props. Finally I getting love some love. Man. Getting finally getting the love this man deserves. Uh, uh, Darkest see. Hour is here, which I saw. Like that kind of was Oscar bait, so I'm not surprised. Yeah, although it was good, uh, but it's yeah. not surprising. The Post is here. I which didn't another... see, but I in this I'm not climate I wasn't interested. That one tomorrow. But yeah, uh, the post is like sort of, kind of an Oscar bait ish movie, and it's like like a like a. It's, it's uh, weird because it isn't and isn't. It's about yeah. a very influential point in time. Yeah. But it almost feels like it is that movie just because it is that movie. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, so. And um, it's also a Steven Spielberg film, so you know he's huh. he's always up for that shit. Uh, but apparently it's one of his best ones in a while, which is good, because I felt like yeah. he's been kind of falling off the mark. Mm-hmm. I just think the Washington Post has been doing really shitty journalism lately, so I was like uninterested in watching it, kind of. But oh yeah, uh, uh, three billboards, which you have a lot of love for. On oh here. yeah, I love three billboards. Dunkirk is on here. Lady Bird uh, is on here. Yeah, La- Lady Bird, Lady Bird, and Call Me by Your Name are two that I still haven't seen, and they are the two big ones that everyone is going absolutely apeshit over. Yeah, I should see Lady Bird just for the social relevance. Like, I don't think it's the kind of movie I'd be interested in, but yeah. Well, I, I, and, and I sort then. of uh, usually like, like I'm not super interested in the director, like her previous work, but like the plot of this movie specifically, I feel like would might resonate with me pretty closely because uh, there's a lot of stuff that I've gone through in my life that might be a little bit similar to this. Um, so I don't know. I'll want to watch it, but yeah, it's like it's like her last movie was like the king of mumblecore movies, and I kind of hate mumblecore movies. Right. Yeah. Uh, we got a, we got all of the uh, all of the animated features. Like I like to spend special uh, animated features, uh, spend special time on the animated features, and then I get mad. Yeah, we we're, uh, we're all everyone here is very interested in all th- in all animation. Three of us so love yeah. animation for yeah. sure. Uh, the breadwinner and loving Vincent are up. Mm-hmm. Which is uh the, these are these are uh the breadwinner and loving Vincent are the two Chinese fucking things that nobody fucking saw. I can't I can't believe Ferdinand is on this list. I <laughs> I fucking can't believe Ferdinand is on this list. <laughs> Even more so than Boss Baby. Like I am what more Ferdinand. What in the fuck is that movie about the fucking bull? Yeah. I don't even remember that movie existed. From the trailer, the animation looks garbage. I can't believe I mean, it. Like. Shit, I was gonna say, like, you can't believe Ferdinand was on this list, yet Boss Baby is acceptable? People were shitting on Boss Baby, but Ferdinand is terrible. (laughs) Nobody even talked about Ferdinand. I I can't believe it. How is your name not on this list, but Ferdinand is? Put fucking Boss Baby on the list. Keep Ferdinand out of this shit. I've never even heard of this movie. I saw trailers for it, and I was like, this movie's gonna suck. 
And you know, I think you know, this is literally this, this, is, this is exactly how I felt. And the, the the point in time where I really started fucking hating like the Oscars, because uh, I'm still mad about really really old stuff. Uh, <laughs> the, the first time when I really started hating it was when fucking Brave beat Paranorman, because I thought Brave was kind of really mediocre. I went and saw Brave. I was like, eh, this isn't super good. It is the least memorable Disney. Pixar movie. Princess movie, yeah. It's just my boo. That one, I, okay, so here's my thing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm less upset about what wins as much as what's nominated, in a way. Right. Because I feel like a nomination is, like, a nod, so, e like, everything else is sort of subjective, but a nomination yeah. is, like, this is a good film, right? Yeah. So, right. so I would be happier if your name mm -hmm. was on this list, even if it didn't win. Yeah. But the fact well, that, like... It's not even on it. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and that's fucking weird, because I always feel like the actual nominations are good, but the winners are always the fucking Disney one. Um, but, like, this year particularly, the nominations are fucking terrible. Sometimes Last year, goddamn, uh... Deserve it. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah, la here's the thing. Last year, fucking My Life as a... My Life as a Zucchini was Teenage fucking nominated. Robot uh close uh and and it's like it's like i was super surprised about that i i think fucking april no nah, april and the extraordinary war world didn't fucking get shit nobody gives a shit about that ghost boy no one gives a fuck uh but like like you had like uh my life is a zucchini and these these other things that it's like do get these oscar nods and nominations and aren't going to win of course because they're not pixar but it's like, hey, this is a good way to figure out, like, uh, maybe you missed these really, really good animated movies. I think uh, fucking Boya in the World got a nomination, which, I mean, I have problems with that movie, but it's one of the, it has some of the best goddamn animation and best sound design I've ever this, seen in a movie. This so list certain. looks like someone just pulled up um, Disney slash Pixar uh, DreamWorks and... Um, Someone clicked on Coco and looked in like the Google, like like they looked in the Google. Like, yeah, the related, related results like, or whatever. Yeah. Like they just picked up the big, the like the big studios in the United States, and that's all they picked from. Like this is and, uh, we're we're also except doing for Loving this... Vincent. I've never heard. I had not heard of Loving Vincent right. until Phil mentioned it earlier today. Yeah, yeah. and like fucking uh the breadwinner is uh the breadwinner i can understand like the breadwinner was hugely funded by angelina jolie who's oh no, I, in the fucking i almost saw this movie but ended up not mm. oops uh angelina jolie you. is like huge and super influential in the oscar scene and can probably could probably push that movie like to getting nominated uh That's and loving vincent is super big because of like the technical fact that it was literally six thousand sixty thousand paintings See, here's, I didn't realize that Loving Vincent was animated, because I saw the poster for it, and I saw, like, the, the synopsis for it, and I was like, oh, this looks kind of interesting, but I think I'm going to see this other movie, whatever it was. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, I didn't realize that it was an animated film, so I'm actually really interested, because I'm, I'm really interested in art, so that yeah. is kind of a no-brainer for me. I just ended up going yeah. for something else. If it's animated, too. You, you thought like... it might have been a live-action oh, yeah. movie about the, about. Uh, yeah, well, and it just had a really thing. interesting poster. Um, like, that's it all is, I think. It is, uh, like, a, it is like, of sort course, of like... a Vincent Van Gogh film would have a painted poster like that. Yeah, but right. It's... Uh, it is, um, it's like rotoscoped. Uh, it is still all in, definitely in the style of Vincent Van Gogh, but uh, the thing is, the... Van Gogh? Uh, it, well, no, it's Van Gogh. That's how it is Van Gogh. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, what, but it's French. The, yeah, it's French. Uh, <laughs> it's well, it's actually Dutch. Dutch? I think it's Dutch. Yeah. It's some French fucking thing that nobody saw. That's the point. <laughs> some French. It's some French fucking movie that nobody fucking saw. Uh, yeah, and and like and like and that's the thing. That's the joke. And I'll probably explain the joke in more fucking depth when. Uh, the Oscars actually roll around, and we get to talk about how. And Coco we get to won. talk about how Coco so, won, yeah. At the same time, uh, through a scanner, darkly, it's actually like a really, I really love the art design in that movie. Oh yeah, and that was another yeah. movie, and that, that was, was entirely. It was one of the yeah. first ones that was like rotoscoped. That was yeah. or not the first ones, but one of the one that was like major. Big... This whole thing is rotoscoped. rotoscoped. So, yeah. right, right. Um. 
So Logan got a nod in adapted screenplay, which is interesting. Oh, like I'm surprised. Wow. That, that is kind of really that is weird. Really like, good, and that's a that's a that's a pretty good one. Yeah, technically it's it's adapted from Old Man Logan, right? Uh, vaguely. No, I think I think they just mean X Men. Yeah, <laughs> just generally. Like yeah. I, I don't think well, that it's well. It has some of the themes of Old Man. Logan, yeah, but it's right? not. It's not. It's not, it's 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 not close enough story. to Old Man. It's not close enough to any story to be an adapted version of any specific story. So, hmm. like it, it has I... themes from Old Man Logan, but it is not Old Man Logan. So yeah. <laughs> I do want to say about adapted screenplay. I think the best part of the adapted screen screenplay nominees is that the disaster artist. Yeah, the is disaster on this artist list. Molly's yeah. game, which is another one, and then Call Me by Your Name, are all in adapted screenplay. So, I, in in a weird way, like I'm glad that Logan got a nod. I don't know that it'll win. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't. Hey, I mean, and uh, Roger Deakins is up for cinematography again. Let's see if he actually fucking wins this time. Uh, yeah, is up on for, Blade uh, Runner. Cinematog- yeah, like yeah. so. Cinematography: uh, Blade Runner, Darkest Hour, Dunkirk, Mudbound, and The Shape of Water. I have not seen Mudbound or Dunkirk, yeah. but of of the three that I have seen, Blade Runner, Darkest Hour, and Shape of Water, while all of those did have great cinematography, I do think Blade Runner probably was the best. And 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 the thing is, like Dunkirk cinematography was okay, but I feel like Dunkirk was like really really um its cinematography was up more by like the production design less yeah, by the yeah. actual shooting of the movie but what i've seen Whereas, of it i i would think that as well where blade yeah. runner had very picturesque well thought out vistas and like yeah you could legitimately you could see the storyboarding in yeah, it so yeah. Yeah, you you it, legitimately you can take any goddamn screenshot from Blade Runner and at any point in time and it will just look gorgeous. It'll look like a painting. Absolutely gorgeous. And that's and that's the thing. Rod that's what Roger Deakins is good at. Roger Deakins is a fucking amazing cinematographer and this is not like the first thing he's done. He's done like a lot of shit. Plus uh Blade Runner could use all the help it could get. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. Really, like if it won an Oscar then it might push people to actually like go out of their way to watch it. Yeah. And uh, the thing is, it's like I, I'm not that I'm not that big on that because it's like if Blade Runner uh, d- continues to like it didn't make very much money, but the fact that it didn't make much money isn't going to really impact uh, Denis Villeneuve's career because he's already fucking in the game. The man is already like. But it might affect Blade make, Runner. It might, yeah, that might affect Blade Runner. But if this was the last Blade Runner movie, I'd be okay with that. Yeah, I guess. Although they kind of um, left sort of a major conflict. Yeah intact at the end of the movie but yeah yeah but yeah so Um, just fast forwarding a little bit film editing baby driver got a got a nod there as well as in sound editing and as well as sound mixing which makes perfect sense for baby driver yeah because it was great all those things were great in baby driver blade runner also got a nod in sound mixing honestly all i've heard about uh baby driver but i i blade runner is the one thing that i did see vaguely and Despite <laughs> my only half amount of attention, it definitely, definitely should win cinematography, in my opinion. That is that. Yeah, is the, it looks pretty. You can look like, at any still frame of that movie, and it looks pretty. And that's yeah. all. That is. And like that takes a lot of know. skill. Yeah. Like the 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 movie didn't even have to come out. It's a Blade Runner movie. You like like I didn't even have to see it. I would have said I would have defaulted to Blade Runner. I'm I like, don't. I don't usually. I'm not. Dumb. I don't. I tend not to go there. But yeah. Uh, I, I know, but. I yeah. don't see as much movies as you, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would have been like, oh, the first one was pretty. Shape of Water got a nod in film editing. Star Wars The Last Jedi got a nod in south, uh, sound editing and sound mixing. Yeah, I can see that. I could see either of those. I could yeah. honestly see either of those winning it, too. I, yeah. I don't know, though. Like, I feel like Baby Driver was so good as, at its mixing and editing in, in terms of sound that I'd, be, I'd almost be surprised if they didn't win either of those yeah mm-hmm. it, like i could see them not winning both maybe but not winning either of them i would be surprised right. film editing i thought baby driver was very well edited as well but i have not seen dunkirk i Tanya, or three billboards <laughs> yet yeah so. i don't know if the, the three billboards should win editing because it wasn't like especially good at Kinetic. that yeah i i mean it was, it was like it had like movie editing it was fine. 
was, it was good. That, that wasn't that wasn't the thing that blew me away about that movie. I feel like, so. but that's the thing about the Oscars. A lot of a lot of Oscar nominations don't have anything to fucking do with the the. It's it's the same thing as the video game awards that we covered like a couple months back. Like some of these things just I have to take have care nothing... of something. Go ahead sure. and continue. Yeah. Some of these things have just nothing to do at all with with the the category they're in. Yeah. It's like they definitely should not win the category, but people say, "Oh, well these were good." So yeah. we'll just put them in there. Yeah. Like like I'm actually really surprised that that under production design, Beauty and the Beast is in there because people didn't really like Beauty and the Beast, but it did have really good production design. It captured the feeling of a Disney animated movie. If there's nothing else you can say about it, it had that Disney animated movie kind of magic to it, and and so under production design, that's a legitimate, that's a pretty legitimate category for it to be in. But I'm surprised that it even made the list because people mostly forgot about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, so it's it's strange. Yeah, and yeah, so, some sometimes it is like that. But I I feel like like with the Oscars, it's like some of these probably shouldn't be in there, and some of them definitely deserve to be in there. Right. And it's is some of the slots just feel like they're being filled because we need to put something in here, which is kind of weird and kind of unfortunate. But that's just how it is. Right, well, we asked right. you, folks. It's a fucking joke. It's a lie. They don't give a shit about you. <clears throat> that makes sense. It's true. Who gives yeah. a shit about the Oscars? Whoa. Yeah, who gives a shit about the Oscars? I don't give a shit about the Oscars. Fuck the Oscars. Fuck the Oscars. It's bullshit. It's all bullshit. It's nothing but a bullshit parade. A since the Oscars. Uh, also, that's like the last news we got to talk about, and I think that's about it. Yeah, like, I think that is about it. Oscars. So I, I, uh, so what do we fill time now? Because Sane's not here, he can't cut the podcast or the stream. Oh fuck, dude. Um, um you know, know what? I'll I'll talk about some of the alcohol I've been drinking throughout this entire podcast. The first okay, alcohol that I've been drinking here is called is a is a wine called Valley of the Moon. I'll just give a give a quick review on it. It is a okay. Napa Valley. I can't remember if it's Napa or Lodi. I knew whether it was Napa or Lodi before I started, but now that I am drinking, I don't remember whether it's Napa or Lodi. So, um, uh, oh, welcome back, Sane. Sorry, but, we were filling time. We finished. Uh, there's nothing else to talk about. Okay, the, perfect. The, if okay, that's... I was trying to talk about alcohol, but okay. Anyway. <laughs> If that's the case, then why don't? Or that's pretty much it, then, right? That's we can wrap it. Up. The point is, this Valley of the Moon wine tastes like fucking vinegar, and don't buy it. Okay, <laughs> that's that's the end of that's the end of the story. All right, <laughs> all right. Okay, so thank you for joining us this week. Um, we're gonna talk about some of the stuff coming up on our channel and and Twitch. So, uh, Thel, why don't you talk about your Streets of Rogue okay. video? So, have a Streets of Rogue video out. Uh, you can go watch it right now. Uh, the next video I'm going to have out is a Hollow Knight video on the Trial of Fools. It's going to either come out this or next week. Probably. And uh, that's well, on uh, our YouTube, which is linked below. Yeah, on our YouTube, which is, yeah. Yes. yes. Wonderful. Um, the, as, as far as my Twitch channel goes, I'm definitely going to be finishing some Nautica. I might even do that later today, as in Monday the 29th, because I am really excited for Subnautica, and I had to kind of cut it short to prepare for the podcast. Um, after Subnautica, I really don't know what I'm going to be doing. I haven't actually decided yet. I may just be streaming some Fallout, not 4, just Fallout in general, in order to kind of get my character to the points where I can discuss the vaults that I am planning to do a video on. Mm, right. Um. Mm. Aside from that, barring Fallout, maybe I'll go to Overlord 2, because Overlord 1 was a really fun experience, and I intended to play Overlord 2 right after, but just so many different games came out and started right. going that... Also, yeah, I, I got I this didn't. game called Hob that you might be interested in. It's kind of like a 3D Zelda-like might hmm. be into. I could give that one a shot, too. Yeah. I might also do some like weird stuff like... Like like Twitch viewer interaction stuff like clone drone in the danger zone or uh, choice chamber stuff like that. That sounds fun. I haven't really decided yet, um, but th I feel like that would be something that I have to get these two in on so that they could fuck with me. 
yeah. <laughs> long enough for other people to show up. <laughs> right. Uh, um, that's about it for my content. Um, okay. That's all I want to promise right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I do plan on working on at least one other thing, but I want... I, I don't know if it's going to come out this week or whatever, so... Uh, Good if morning. that's it, thanks for joining us. We will see you next time. And I think the most important part, as always, is to remember, stay beautiful. <laughs>